I woke up this morning to the coolest thing that's ever happened in the history of the Libertarian Party. And I will, if I'm being completely honest, as uh, Donald Trump was speaking last night, if I had control of how everybody acted, my plan was kind of like, be respectful till he says something, like don't boo him before he even gets to the mic and just wait till he says something really bad, which he will, and then boo that. But I gotta say it worked out pretty good because I woke up this morning to reports in the New York Times, the Washington Post, Reuters, the Associated Press, ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, and the BBC, and they all said different versions of the exact same title. Donald Trump tries to appeal to libertarians and they hate his fucking guts. Ah, hear ye. All right, people. That's where it ends in? Yes, that's where it and ends. And I think that's pretty cool. And I think that's pretty cool because I've said this before. I think libertarians are actually liberals in disguise, which is fitting because now we can call them both libs. I got into a bit of a fight with Dave Smith. He told me to fuck off on Twitter, which I, I don't care, actually. I didn't read that as like a go fuck off. I read it as a playful, oh, fuck off, Viva, because you edited something together and I didn't like the way you edited it. Um, that's one that's not unedited because it's only a portion of his speech, which was before the libertarians based on the, what's that woman in the background with the, what's going on right here with this uh, Statue of Liberty woman? Either way, that's one clip. I'm going to play the other clip because I've been accused of misrepresenting or creatively splicing to misrepresent. Okay, hold on. That was one that was one clip. Where is the second clip? Here we go. My remarks on You know what? Don't, okay, listen. There's broadly speaking, I think two groups of people this here. This is after Trump spoke from what Okay. I'm... No, but I'm serious. There are okay, there are members of the, the night, Libertarian the Party and yeah. And there are people who came here to support Donald Trump. Get the get the sound meter thing, the decibelometer, because Listen, that's much louder. I want, I have, I have a message for both of you individually. I hear you. To the members of the Libertarian Party, which I am also one. Guys, guys, guys. Listen, yes, here's my message babies. to the Libertarians here. The former president of the United States of America and the current front runner to be the next president is here to talk to you. We, we are not a bunch of college leftist sissies. We believe in free speech. So be respectful. Right. That was his I'm message not telling the you you before. have to agree with him, and I'm not telling you you have to cheer for him, but we're not having a like Jordan Peterson at Berkeley event here. And the message we're sending to the world is not that we can't handle ideas that we disagree with. All right. Now he talks about a message to the, to the Trumpers as well. And I'll leave that because um, it's irrelevant for the purposes of this video. That was his message the night of, and the one where he said, Trump came to the libertarian party and they made it clear they hate his fucking guts. And he was citing all of the most reputable news outlets with pride. And then he says, and I think that's pretty cool. All right. Well, I spliced it together because I, I, and I was forgiving. I wasn't even, I, I looked, I was like, I said, this seems pretty duplicitous. I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. Hold on. But I have difficulty reconciling these two diametrically opposing messages. And I, I won't play the whole thing. I'll play a portion so you get the idea. I woke up this morning to the coolest thing that's ever happened in the history of the Libertarian well, Party. The Libertarian Party needs and to get out more. I will, if I'm being completely honest, as uh, Donald Trump was speaking last night, if I had control of how everybody acted, my plan was kind of like, guys, listen, here's my message to the libertarians here. The former president of the United States of America and the current front runner to be the next president is here to talk to you. We, we are not a bunch of college leftist sissies. We believe in free speech, so be respectful. I will, if I'm being completely honest, as uh, Donald Trump was speaking last night, if I had control of how everybody acted, my plan was kind of like, be respectful till he says something. We are not a bunch of college leftist sissies. We believe in free speech, so be respectful. 
like don't boo him before he even gets to the mic and just wait till he says something really bad, which he will, and then boo that. So be respectful. But I got to say it worked out pretty good because I woke up this okay, morning DC, and they all said different versions of the exact same title. Donald Trump tries to appeal to libertarians and they hate his fucking guts. We are not a bunch of college leftist sissies and they hate his fucking guts. Oh, we can stop it there. You get the idea. I got to tell you, like saying you hate someone's fucking guts is quite literally high school sissy stuff. All right. <laughs> someone says, love you, you've got to go. <laughs> I hope I didn't scare someone off with a little. So then I get a bit of a, oh, Viva, fuck off here. Oh, here it is. And I don't take it personally. Oh, fuck off, Viva. If you actually listen to both speeches instead of splicing them in this dishonest way, that's where I sort of took a little more offense. It's obvious that there's no contradiction. Duplicitous, this is garbage dishonesty. That's two accusations of dishonesty above and beyond the being told to fuck off, which I don't mind. But I don't think there was anything dishonest or inaccurate about it. And never did I think I'd be getting, you know, uh, a rage tweeted by uh, the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire. I like Ruben. I love Ruben. I like uh, Dave Smith. They're both Daves. But uh, that seems duplicitous. That seems um, like speaking out of both sides of your mouth, depending on what crowd you're speaking to. And it's also a monumental mess up, Smith. You had the president there. A lot of people are saying, great, way to blow getting a libertarian in as a cabinet position. Uh, and I tend to agree with that. Now, in the backdrop, I happen to see Biggity Barnes with 1776 Law Center in his title which is a great, great way to segue into the sponsor of today, which is 1775 Coffee, people. Uh, it's good damn coffee. Are you, look, 1775 Coffee is the year before 1776, the 1776 moment, and the coffee is delicious. Are you a sleepy Joe who has zero cognitive performance, scared of walking upstairs without being worried you're gonna fall down or fall up because Joe Biden is the only person to fall upstairs as far as I know? Do you struggle to muster focus and brain power for basic things in life such as eating ice cream or riding a bike? You need to stop drinking woke liberal coffee and start your day by drinking Rumble's very own 1775 coffee. Never mind that it will be the best tasting coffee you have ever had in your life, as in it's seriously good and will put hair on your chest except for me, no hair on my chest. I consider that to be a sign of evolution. It's actually ethically sourced from a family farm in high altitude in Bolivia. So instead of waking up tomorrow morning and drinking your mold infested big corporation owned woke ideology coffee, that's probably making you sick with all the pesticides they spray on it. Try Rumble's own 1775 coffee, support freedom of speech and build the parallel economy that we all know we need to have. 1775coffee.com. Go there right now. Use the promo code Viva, 10% off your first order. So make it a big one. Um, and then they got medium dark pea berry. Uh, I like the dark roast, obviously, because I like to taste my coffee when I drink it. You won't regret it for a moment. Level up your morning routine with a bag of 1775 coffee and sleep well at night, knowing that you and your hard-earned dollars are going towards a company that loves freedom, loves the creators, and loves your business. Ah, <sighs> and it's good. I had some this morning. It's delicious. Now, guys, I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to talk about it. I, I, I don't, it's like, I don't, I don't know why. I mean, it's, 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 it's you know, it's, it's too close. The, it's a member of our community. I don't want to talk about it. And when you do talk about it, you get accused of being a grifter. You get accused of being a drama queen. When you don't talk about it, you get accused of being controlled opposition, covering for a friend. And so, like, it's a, it's a, it's a lose lose situation. But we have to talk about it. The Rakeda affidavit or the um, probable cause in support of the application for the warrant has been released. And uh, I've seen some analysis. I've seen Barnes's tweet and Barnes messaged me. He says, you're going live. We might have to pop on and talk about it. So Barnes, get ready. Sir, sir, how goes the battle? I feel weird seeing you on a weekday. Yeah, indeed. A special edition, Viva and Barnes. <laughs> uh, it's time for the OG of LawTube to educate the rest of LawTube, the, uh, which is apparently proving that uh, more than a few of them are constitutionally illiterate. Uh, and the some of them apparently are reading the Constitution with their one bad eye. Uh, some others uh, that you know looks like something out of a Job of the Hut movie are educating other people about their health conditions and confusing the criminal law in the process. A lot of people in law tube have been res uh, responding uh, to the Sunday show and making uh, complete. Uh, retards of themselves, uh, <laughs> revealing the degree to which how many of them are just completely illiterate about the Constitution. And I think your point is right. People uh, in law tube, especially, or those concerned about the Constitution, just remove the name of the person here. 
Forget who the person is here. Well, it's I think George the- Jones. It's Jack uh, uh, Jack Brown. It's it's whomever. Uh, because people are so caught up in the emotions of the individual involved uh, that they're not just applying basic constitutional law principles. And then more than a few people are just grifting, you know, like potentially criminal Sean. The only thing accurate about his name is probably the criminal part. <laughs> The uh, he Barnes, is, Barnes is, is unleashing now. <laughs> this is a guy that only uh, the world only knows about because of Nick Ricada, and the he's making basically just ridiculous statements about probable cause in the Fourth Amendment. And this goes back because we'll also bridge into reviewing the Trump closing arguments, which are happening as we speak. Uh, we can't unfortunately broadcast them because the corrupt judge won't let the world see them, but we can follow some of the really good uh, uh, Twitter commentators out there that are reporting it, like Inner City Press, Matthew Lee. The, uh, uh, and we got a huge, huge ruling out of the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals uh, that's so big, I wanted to talk about it right away, uh, rather than wait for the Sunday show on uh, religiously discriminatory vaccine mandates. For those that don't know, this is a case everybody in the legal community concerning these issues has been watching because this case was going to dictate the entire future of being able to bring religious discrimination claims in general and against vaccine mandates in particular. Massive win. By the way, guess where Mike Tyson appeal uh, is going in front of? Oh, yes, it's the same Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals. So Tyson's got a little uh, uh, special uh, Viva-style birthday gift coming to them pretty soon from the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals. Speaking of gift, I got to keep my phone on because my my birthday gift to myself required a signature for delivery and I missed it and they came, they're coming four days later. Robert, with the Ricada thing, I, I, there's a number of, of um, issues going on, but I think the toughest thing is people separating what they personally believe based on their own observations of Ricada's behavior from the complaint. And, yeah. and, and, and it's like, exactly. I, I mean, and, and, and they're infusing things in the complaint that actually aren't in there. Infusing things in the, I mean, all a bunch of law to owes me an apology, right? Frankly, I don't know how many people I was like, Barnes is just speculating on the search warrant, he can't possibly know it's in the search warrant. Well, folks, when you have a criminal complaint and a probable cause affidavit in support of detention, and you can use something called common sense, and you can use something called lived experience, which granted, I probably have a lot more of in the law, uh, in criminal and constitutional cases than all of law tube combined, but. The uh, the that it's not speculation anymore. And guess what? We got the search warrant today, folks. And it's as big of a crock and a joke as I said it was from day one. I, I, I'm going to I'm going to preface this because people first of all, I'm going to bring up one. Sh- Did someone say, uh, why are you guys simping for Rakeda? We are talking about the no, well-being. No, of I'm simping for the Constitution of the United States. And some of us don't violate our constitutional oaths or our commitment to the Constitution because we like or don't like who it's being well, applied to. But I I'm going to the Eighth Amendment when Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein and Sam Frank- Bankman Freed's rights were being violated. And I'm not a fan of any of those three people. Well, and, and I, I'll say this for my own self. I, I Criminal charges or not, I personally believe that Rakeda desperately needs help, period. Uh, so th- starting with that, my own personal opinion, I'm not reading to absolve Rakeda from this affidavit, but I am reading this affidavit as though, let's just take for granted that anybody who's dislikes a public figure who knows details about their lives, how they could weaponize that in order to go after them. I think Ricada, criminal charges or not, and if he manages to find a legal way to get out of this legal conundrum, I personally believe he needs help. I think you know, legal charges or not, he should be checking himself into rehab. I think especially given the criminal charges, strategically, he should be checking himself into rehab. If only for, if and if he doesn't think he needs the help for the, for the public appearance of the trial, for the courts and for public perception. That's what I think. And I'm going to, I go read this affidavit. I'm like, I hear people saying the kids were the ones who reported the behavior. And I was like, I'm reading. It's like, where does it say that? And lo and behold, it doesn't. And people don't know how to read or they're infusing what they believe they know of Ricada's life situation into the affidavit. Rob, Robert, I, Rob, <laughs> I'm not going to bring up the affidavit because it's got his address in it and I didn't redact it. And I'm nervous. Yeah, about. I'll, I'll, I mean, I did. I'll, I'll read it. I'll read it. But I'm not, I'm not bringing yeah. it up because well, I haven't I'll, redacted I'll a, it. Well, I can do the summation. The, uh, I do a further breakdown at Viva Barnes Law locals.com as part of the Barnes Law School edition of how to read an affid- search warrant affidavit uh, using the Ricada case as a example, as an opportunity for constitutional education about your rights. 
and the and that's what people should be focused on. The not what they think or don't think about Nick Riquet to the individual. Uh, the, obviously, he has a bunch of haters and trolls because they keep well, they and, 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 and not, 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 in fairness, <laughs> not in fairness to them, but in just you know, in fairness to Riquet, like th this is remember back in the day, you were a little bit more critical of the individual that Riquet was going after. I'm not going to mention the name because I don't want to rehash it, but this Riquet has gone after people very personally, very vitriolically, who you would expect no sympathy from. But even back in the day then, I didn't like this. We're dealing with real humans at the end of the day, and whether or not they've done stupid things in their past, I don't believe in uh, rehashing those things, humiliating them to the point where bad things can happen. And at a minimum, you can never use the facts of the case uh, that, you, that infuse moral or political judgment to allow you to debauch the Constitution of the United States. That's, we... that, that, you know, that's my only uh, true loyalty, is to the Constitution of the United States. If Robert... Nick Mercado was the one violating it, I'd be calling him out for violating it. I care about the Constitution of the United States, and that's what a lot of law tube is either too emotionally compromised or legally illiterate to do, uh, because this, this affidavit is a joke. Well, we're the, 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 first of all, I, I'm going to make a joke, actually, because I, it says state of Minnesota, county of Candy U High. Has anybody made that joke yet? Like the, the, the county is literally called Candy U High. K-A-N-D-I. -I, -I, it's not spelled the same way. Y-O-H-I. That's if nobody's made that joke yet. Well, I, I'm the first one to coin it. Um, so, no, no, people are people are in, infusing their observations of what they believe to be a downfall, an addiction problem. And I can steal men this. You're dealing with an adult who does stupid things on his streams, gets drunk, clearly intoxicated, thinks that, you know, his wife will take care of the kids in the morning. It doesn't mean that there's neglect because he's behaving like a degenerate. Um, and so there's, but someone sees this and says, well, this is an easy target. I can now make all sorts of accusations. I don't like his politics, so I can make sort of accusations. He'll be a very, very easy target because I've seen what he's done online. Um, and I, I want to address one thing. The video where Nick allegedly comes back from a 45 minute pee break. And as many people on the internet are saying has white powder on his nose. I, I went to watch it. This is not for the sake of defending Nick for the reasons I won't repeat. I don't see that as definitively as I thought I would have need to see that in order for yeah. people to make that claim. I, I didn't see it. Well, and that's another sign of what's missing from the warrant. So the warrant basically violates all the war rules of warrants. First, you need to have probable cause of a crime. Second, uh, you need to disclose information that would be material to the judge's decision. You can't omit that set of information. Uh, and, and thus, you cannot submit a fraudulent affidavit by omitting material information if you know it. And so some of the, th like an honest, conscientious judge would have never signed this search warrant based on this affidavit, which uh, further suggests that my hypo hypothesis on Sunday, that there's political corruption and personal motivation and First Amendment violating retaliatory animus involved in this case is further substantiated. Because so to give people an idea what the search warrant is, I'll, I'll read it as you go along, Robert. I'll, yeah. I'll read it certain passages. And, and I inferred this from the get go that, you know, because and where how, how do you infer that? Like apparently like Nate, the lawyer and uh, so there's some folks that are on Legal Mindset show, you know, they're like, how, how could you possibly guess what's in the search warrant? Well, you take the criminal complaint that's already been filed that alleges the charges that usually gets into some detail. And you take the probable cause affidavit for the detention, and that would give you a roadmap to what's likely in the search warrant. Turns out it's even weaker than I thought. I, I but so the search warrant's a combination of three sources of information. I should say two sources of information, um, but three different subsources, if you will. So the, the first source of information is that a pastor came in and reported the statements of other people who are in turn <laughs> reporting the statements of other people. So we'll get to that category. Second category is, uh, turns out the cop is a, is a psychology expert, doctor. Uh, he can prescribe, he, he can diagnose from online social media uh, be, uh, because that's the second source, is the cop's own uh, uh, extraordinary expertise to know uh, whether someone has been using drugs or not by watching a video of them. Uh, not a video of them using drugs, to be clear, just a video. A of video them. of the behavior. We'll, we'll get, I'll read the that behavior, part. Uh, including just like a minute, minute's worth. 
Um, and, and then the underlying video, which, by the way, you, one of the things you point out is there's actually not clear evidence of any white powder on his nose. I, I looked I looked closely because everyone said it. And I was like, oh, I, and, I, and I had seen the clip and I was like, oh, that can't be the clip because I don't see, I, yes. I could maybe see glare if I wanted to be yeah. really, really meticulous. Well, not only that, what's the giveaway that the cop, that a judge would flag right away, that the cop knows he, his, his uh, statement isn't supported? There's no photo in the search warrant affidavit. There's no inclusion of the video in the search warrant affidavit. In other words, the cop knows an independent judge or independent person looking at this won't draw the same conclusion. It's a form of material omission. L let me stop you there. An independent judge, this judge who signed off on the warrant is indeed Jennifer Fisher. And I'm just awaiting confirmation that this is in fact the judge who's dealing with Riqueda's civil claim uh, where he has been you know, making public statements not so favorable of the judge. I'm not but sure about that. He's called out the judge is incompetent and corrupt. And what is that judge doing involved in this case? Uh, was the, that judge the one who signed the search warrant? So the the third source, so the first source, uh, pastor coming in, telling what other people have told him. Second source, the cop uh, interpreting videos, social media, online videos, but very limited what videos he's looked at. And the third is... Uh, be a, another social media blogger making statements that he infers have certain meanings. Not that the, well, these statements, because this person has later on made new statements, but not at the time of the search warrant affidavit. People are tending to confuse the two. It's like, that's not what's in the search warrant affidavit. It, it, it is not, not worth uh, ignoring or omitting that um, uh, the person that you're talking about is the disgruntled ex-spouse yeah. of the woman who's living at the house. Having Exactly. I mean, so the, so literally it's church gossip, social media gossip, and a cop pretending he's an expert based on a single body language interpretation of a video and comparing two photos. I mean, that none of, not, none of which has anything to do with drugs. It's just an inference. This is a crock. I mean, and then Nate, the lawyer, was like, oh, I think this is completely fine. I was like, okay, Nate, find one comparable case in the country that found probable cause, Nate. Well, Get let, out let there me, and actually do a little legal research this let time. Me, let me, let me. <laughs> There's going to be a beef between Nate and Barnes after this. Oh, um, hey, he is. <laughs> Nate. Come Sunday, if, if 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 the legal analysis doesn't improve, everybody who does crap analysis is going to get individually called out for crap analysis. Because some of these people, I'm not saying this about Nate, but some of these people are clearly just grifting off of. Uh, some of them were made famous and successful because of uh, because of Nick, and, and they're just grifting off of it. And they well, know I, that there's I, I'll, they I'll say this. easy plaudits that they bash Nick and, and they're doing horrendous constitutional law analysis. And why do I care about that? You could care, not care about Nick. I care about the constitution and I care about law tube lying about the constitution, misleading people about the constitution. That's a problem. I don't, I don't put any weight in the loyalty argument for, for celebrity status. So I don't care that it, if he made them famous, fine. But if, if I'll say this, if it turned out and I, I was saying this internally, Alleged neglect because of drug addiction is terrible. Uh, and I'll say this something that might be shocking, but it's not as bad as physical abuse or sexual abuse. I said, if, if it, if it were to come out, if it were to come out that there was physical abuse or sexual abuse. Well, Which is none, by the way. None, no none. No allegation. No, I mean, and we'll get to what the specific allegations are and how they're fourth hand hearsay and all the other, pro and they come from a biased witness and they're not independently confirmed. We'll get to all of that. The uh, 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 it, it, as we go through this, but the other thing to think of in terms of a probable cause for the search warrant affidavit, there was some other idiot lawyer troll on the internet. Like, oh, Barnes doesn't know what he's talking about. Hey, Barnes, what about this case? Well, the case supports my exact argument. The guy apparently didn't know how to read a case. I mean, that's how bad a lawyer he was. But the so Minnesota, like pretty much everywhere, now why might the Fourth Amendment standards be uniform, everybody? Why might they be the same in pretty much every state in America? Why not? Why might they be the same in all the federal courts across the jurisdictions? Oh, I don't know. Because it's the Fourth Amendment to the United States Constitution. The, in supreme, a the supreme law of the land. Yeah. I mean, come on, law too. Lord have mercy. But the, they're like, oh, maybe there's something specific about Minnesota. Well, uh, but let me let me ask you the one thing, because we're, we're going to get to it. And I like the fact that you broke it down to three, because you got your hearsay element, which is what it is. Then you've got your analysis ex element, which is what it is. It's not just hearsay. It's well, fourth. I'll fourth, get there. Fourth day of the hearsay. So Which we'll, we'll explain to people there's different kinds of hearsay. But now the question is this, as, as a question of principle, is not hearsay admissible for probable cause in a, in a purest form uh, or ideal sense? 
So here's how what they do. They say, here's when you can take into consideration hearsay. First of all, it depends on what kind of hearsay it is. In other words, is it just single hearsay? George told me this. Or is it what's called secondhand hearsay? Jack told George told me this. Or is it third hand or what somebody called fourth hand hearsay? Julie told Jack told George told Joe this. This is the old game of phone, you know, uh, that, you know, used to play or, or rumor, you know, when you, I don't know, these kids, you know, sit around and you whisper something and guys, by the time it goes around the room, it's completely been butchered from the beginning of the room to the end of the room, what took place. Um, uh, so it depends on the quality of uh, how much hearsay it is. This is true of rules of evidence for admission at trial. Certain kinds of hearsay is admissible. But the more versions of hearsay it is, the more it's secondhand, thirdhand, or fourthhand, the more it's completely unreliable and thrown out, no matter what the basis of the exception and is. Let's get to it right away. I'm going to read. I'm not bringing up the affidavit because I haven't blacked it. I'll just tell everybody that the address is in multiple places. The affiant, you have the application for search warrant. Okay. Uh, the affiant says, I believe the following described property and things, namely controlled substances, including methamphetamine, cocaine, and other controlled substances prohibited by law and paraphernalia commonly associated and used with those substances, items that would show controlled substance use that would not qualify as legal drug paraphernalia at the, at the premises. So you get Nick, the, he's applying for the, the, affid the warrant on the following grounds. Two bullets, bullet points. The possession of the property of the things above described constitutes a crime. The property or things above described constitutes evidence which tends to show a crime has been committed or tends to show that a particular person has committed a crime. Then we get into the facts of this. And the facts, by the way, the first one, two, three, four paragraphs are describing the expertise of the affiant. Your affiant is Detective yeah. QP. Oh, I'm a detective. I used to be a former small town police chief. I've taken drug training classes, people. I, 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 I'm a super duper expert. When it comes to all this, now know what else he notes in his affidavit. The uh, but by the way, he has no medical expertise, psychology. Well, but, expertise, well I'll take Robert. Forensic this, 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 body language expertise, any real expertise. When this I got nervous, stops, I can smell marijuana ten miles away. Well, That's why I arrested you and pulled you over, son. Since 2018, your affiant has been assigned to the detective division on a full time basis. That's six years, focusing six on years. felony six level years. crimes, not but not limited to criminal sexual conduct, homicide, death investigations, missing persons, yada, yada. This is what I got nervous. He's not a drug expert. In other words, he's the local small town cop that handles whatever comes through. But notice what else he notes. He notes he's familiar with Ricada. Hmm. Kind of maybe he follows Ricada. He admits he's familiar and the police department is familiar because they previously, unconstitutionally, swatted Nick Ricada based on false accusations against Ricada. They admit that it's like, hmm, Shouldn't you detail the history of the false accusations against Ricada in a search warrant affidavit, given that it's, again, based on third-party, fourth-hand information? And when you did that before, you violated his constitutional rights by taking uh, uh, inadequate information to try to swat somebody? Mm, what do you think? But the other thing is, so why does he uh, watch and read and review? Well, let, let, let me read it because I, I want to make sure. He that out, doesn't he? <laughs> okay, so this is paragraph two of the case background. First, paragraph one says, on May 16, 2024, uh, someone received a report regarding possible child neglect and controlled substance use. Uh, then we talk about the kids, aged five, five children, aged six to 16. The reporter indicated that four people from their church had gone to him reporting neglect of the children, possible controlled substance use, and a questionable relationship with an additional couple. I don't know what a questionable relationship. <laughs> well, I mean, listen to this, boy. This is your classic church lady. I don't remember Saturday Night Live, church lady. Yep. Well, Nina isn't Carby. that special? <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, the This is church gossip. So the pastor comes in. By the way, there is a pastor petitioner privilege in Minnesota. So the pastor is prohibited under Minnesota law from disclosing anything that he ever received directly from Nick or his wife or the kids uh, uh, in, a, as part of any seeking spiritual guidance. And it's specifically noted that the child neglect reporting provision is not an exception to that privilege under Minnesota law, by the way. There, so it raises an issue whether he was hinting at or implying he knew anything else. But so what you have is a pastor saying, well, uh, here's our church gossip for the week. We got four people that came in and say, that Ricada feller, he's walking out in the middle of sermons. And, and, and he, I, I think he might be having an affair. Well, the, 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 what does this get to do with a criminal a warrant? Probable cause? That's not, the, you can walk out on a, on a sermon. You, you can do what you want between consenting adults. 
That's, why is that even in the war? But then, and, and people had said, oh, my goodness, the four children reported him. And I was like, oh, I didn't no, see that. No, it, no, I'm no, going to read it again. The, the reporter indicated. So I don't know. I don't know if the reporter is the pastor, but the reporter indicated. Is, yeah, we know that from the other affidavit. OK, so the reporter says four people came to him reporting po re reporting neglect of the children possible use of drugs and a questionable relation so four people go to the pastor the pastor then goes to this guy uh qp and this guy goes to a judge and then says this is the basis that four people complained of potential neglect um i want to uh, uh, i mean listen I get... to by the way remember folks it's called probable cause of a crime not possibility of a crime not maybe i think possibly could have happened. Could well, the, the, the problem is this, and people are going to say, look, I've watched Rakeda get um, stupid, sloppy, splurred speech drunk on stream. Seen him done terrible things on the stream. Which okay. Is, by the way, also not illegal. To be and, drunk and, at home is not illegal. To be drunk uh, the, during the time, the, there's no evidence that has any, that has any impact on the children. So the uh, that by itself, he mentions this, and it's like, that's not evidence of criminality. Uh, hey, listen, the, but we'll, 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 yeah, we'll get to we'll get there. But listen to this: your affiant knows personally of these personalities talking about uh, the the Ricada and yeah. the Steel how Toe Morning that? Show, which how, used to be. In how, how does he know these people? What does that tell you about this cop? That maybe what I said on Sunday that the way this cop wrote that probable cause detention warrant suggested bias. And here he is saying, "Oh, I personally know these people. How, how do you personally know?" Them? I, I never heard of Steel Toe. I don't know what I don't know if they're left or right. But uh, I'm total loser, dude. That uh, sort of grifted his way into the Ricada world, and then his wife, he believes, uh, his wife left him for Ricada, uh, and he's had almost no success in the social media world until Ricada, and now he's grifted mad on Ricada. He's doing like, uh, by the way, the idiot is admitting crimes on a daily basis. Because he, he's he's too dimwitted to understand the uh, the nature of the law. While he's out there attacking, he was sicking his audience on me and other people. The uh, uh, saying, "Oh, law tube is just uh, you know uh, defending Nick Rakita." Da, da, da. Pal, you're as bad at social media as you are at law. Stick 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 in your your lane, and you should probably take your own advice. He's telling Nick, you know, keep your mouth shut. Pal, you probably should too. Well, well Rakita uh, should Rakita should admit be crimes on a daily basis. Rakita I mean, I mean, should be keeping his mouth. I realize what he's doing. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to read this so that it'll quell people's concerns. Your affiant knows personally these are personalities of the Steel Toe Morning Show. Ah, cripe, what's going on? Hold on, sorry, something just came up. Um, he knows that these are uh, personalities of the Steel Toe Morning Show, which used to be in Sane Cloud, uh, Minnesota radio. However, as of recent years, the show has been a social media entertainment show, strictly online based. It was reported that the Imholtz may have been staying with the Rakedas and the home was in disarray and cluttered. It was reported <laughs> from cluttered, cluttered, cluttered. That, that, that's, guess what else, uh, Nate the lawyer? That too is not probable cause of a crime. No, it's like, I, and Nick, I, I've said this before, like. I can imagine I'll steal man Rakeda justifying what I believe is addiction. He'll say, look, I'm doing it at a time when the kids are sleeping. We've got a second. Uh, my wife can take care of the kids if I'm dysfunctional and I can drink and do what I want because that's what the crowd wants. I can, I can understand that to say in the after it's in disarray and cluttered that, and that's it. Not like the kids are sleeping in shit. Not like the diapers haven't been changed. Although the kids are not in diapers. What, it's in disarray and cluttered. There, listen, and listen nexus, to this. The nexus that's required to allege a crime of child endangerment for constitutional reasons. This is the fifth amendment. God bless legally mindset people on his crew. They, 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 they struggle to understand all the constitution, but fifth amendment one, they particularly didn't understand. Fifth amendment is your fundamental right. It's the most fundamental right recognized in by the U S Supreme court to care, custody and control of your child. Why does that matter? That limits what laws the state can pass to invade that relationship, including what conduct they can criminalize. What's fascinating to me about all of this is how completely out of touch a large number of these people in law tube are. The reason if, if now I happen to do a cross section of these areas of law for a quarter century. So I, I admit I may have a distinct uh, familiarity uh, with this. Uh, the first time I ever mentioned the Constitution, family court. And the, I, remember, I was like, Judge, there's constitutional issues in the family court. Judge I said, Constitution? Constitution? What does the Constitution have to do with it? So that was my introduction to family court. 
Uh, it's the core aspect that, that defines the limits of all law, civil and criminal, because it concerns the fundamental right of parents to control care and custody of their children. So that means in order for endang- in order for the state to criminalize some behavior of a parent with a child, there must be a nexus to harm to the child. And usually it's substantial harm of an emotional or physical kind that is sufficient to criminally punish and prosecute someone for how they engage in care, custody, and control the child. For, for example, you have to constantly have that nexus. You can't have their doing something over here that you disapprove of if you don't show it directly causing emotional and physical harm to the child. And that needs um, to be alleged in the affidavit to meet probable cause. Well, here, here, I see but a lot of people in the chat talking about things they know outside of the affidavit. That doesn't matter. It's what's in the affidavit. And well, I'll get to the what, what many people are arguing is the crux of it. This is at page two. It was reported from a church preschool teacher that the children had complained of being hungry, not fed, and wearing the same clothes for three to four days at a time and would start to smell. Uh, Now, listen to that, by the way. Let's take that statement apart, which is being misconstrued broadly on the social media. It was reported from a a church preschool teacher. We don't know if that's their... What's the first problem with that? what, what, What should highlight to you? So we know two facts. From the search warrant affidavit. One, the kids are aged 6 to 16. Second, they say this is a church preschool teacher. Well, so that's the question I had is that this preschool teacher might not even be the kids' teachers, but they're homeschooling. So there might be some, I don't know, familiar. That's not included in the affidavit of note. Why isn't that included in the affidavit? Maybe it's not because. Because it would raise questions about the church preschool teacher as a source, right? And here again, the actual source is not the children. The actual source is not the teacher. The actual source is not even the pastor. The actual source is the cop reporting what he says the pastor said about what he says the church preschool teacher said about what they they say the kids said. But it's not identified when they said it, the context they said it. Where they said it? Was it all of them? Were all five children, six to sixteen, sitting in preschool together at the but, same and also, time? And Robert, like I, again, I, like this There's is a clue point- here, by the way, to all of this. The, the, but we'll get to it in a second. Well, no, I, and I'm going to play de- not devil's advocate, but just uh, uh, the advocate. A lawyer is going to come in here and say, "Look, I, I, I was talking about this with my wife. Twenty percent of Canadian children report going hungry." So uh, let's just say that they have financial problems. Yeah, your kids are. Who, who knows? I mean, everybody's ever had kids said that they're hungry. How many oh, times have they been on the Hungry and dirty. Hungry and dirty. Like uh, if you have kids. No, here's the second part. Listen to that. So uh, they complained about smelly clothes because they hadn't changed. Six to 16 years of age. So are 16-year-olds incapable of changing their own clothes? We don't know. Let's 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 I mean, assume the worst. Really, although I mean, it doesn't I mean, say. If you take apart that statement, that statement doesn't really make any sense. It's implied to make a judge reading it quickly without thinking it through and doing a cross check of there's three and four year olds going to a preschool who are starving and, and have no clothes. Well, but the the, the, the question I had can't apply here because all the kids are six or older, and it doesn't even make sense when you just just apply logic to it. So. Uh, how, how can it be? Sixteen-year-olds uh, can change themselves, and they routinely do. So the here's my guess. My guess is this is a statement. Notice also he separates that statement, right? He doesn't put it right up next to where the pastor is talking in mm-hmm. general. He removes it. Well, he, but Robert, my he, guess he, is this is something that's years old. Well, that, well I was this just could be a statement to, made from eight, six years ago. Years I was ago. just about to say it is that it's also temporally not specified. It was reported from a church preschool pre- teacher that the children had complained of being hungry, not fed, and were when and noted like, it was when? reported. All of a sudden, authorship is gone. All no, of a sudden, it's, it's the past. It, it just happened. It was and, reported. And, and, Who did it? And maybe the pastor told him this, or maybe the pastor didn't even tell him this, right? In other words, that you see, he's sticking in there. Okay, how can I get something that sounds scary to a judge, right? Uh, the I'll, I'll I'll have him have the image of three year olds starving and without clothes and without basic care, and I'll put this statement in, knowing that some judges are too lazy, or like a lot of people on social media, run with that statement without putting any it's, logic to it or comment. It's sense. not temporally specified. They had reported it, in the past. Authorship is not specified. 
and it doesn't make sense on its face. People are saying, oh, their teacher reported. Really? The 16-year-old was in preschool? The 16-year-old was in preschool. The 14-year-old was in preschool. Even the six-year-old year six year old ain't in preschool. So preschool is for three, four, and five-year-olds. So this is a giveaway that this statement doesn't even really make sense. So on its face. Well, but and, and this is the statement that people are running with to say the four complainants were the kids or the four reporters were the kids. This is it was reported from a school teacher that the children had previously complained about being hungry, not fed. And we and, and that was relayed to either directly to the affiant or through the pastor to the affiant. OK, that's that's Never that's wait. as bad Even as it gets. It, were so it is not sufficient. For example, this has been litigated. Uh, apparently, Nate, the lawyer, hasn't spent any time researching it, nor has any of these other people done it. So the Pennsylvania Supreme Court some years ago. I've had reason to be researching Pennsylvania cases of late. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court made a probable cause determination because here's what happens. It's such a scandal. This is also people that don't understand child welfare and how they abuse power all over the place. That They're missing the context. They're so obsessed with Nick. They're utterly ignoring the much bigger threat to the world of government abuse of constitutional power and especially how rogue child welfare agencies are. In New York, it was so bad that it led to massive federal civil rights lawsuits and the rest. But here's what happened in Pennsylvania. They, someone, someone were called in. So it was a firsthand hearsay. Second, it was first based on firsthand observation. Saw a kid hadn't been fed all day. And, and, and the parent they complained about was a parent that had a documented record uh, of, of child neglect. And based on that, they did a search warrant. Yeah, and well, first they went to the house, they were refused entry, and then got a search warrant. Guess what the Pennsylvania Supreme Court said? No way that meets Fourth Amendment standards. They're like, not a chance. And there you had firsthand observation, criminal record, and they at least attempted a first intervention for further investigation. So the what the Minnesota Supreme Court, like everywhere else, for hearsay to matter, it needs to be firsthand observation. Okay, you saw something that was criminal, or is clear evidence of criminality, the person reporting it. Second, that the uh, that it, it, that the person testifying has reasons to the to for you to rely on them, right? So usually in the CI context, confidential informant context, they'll say this person has a long history, long record of being reliable and trustworthy, things like that. Or like the case, the the main Minnesota Supreme Court case, the people were testifying against their own criminal interests. So they're like, okay, that that's evidence of reliability. There's a bunch of these tools here. And you have to exclude evidence of bias that might make them unreliable. The third thing that's still not sufficient for probable cause, you still have to have independent corroborating evidence to support it. Otherwise, they don't do it. Let me explain to you why that is. Two reasons. In Minnesota, by law, they're required upon a report to first do an investigation before anything else happens. Here, it's clear. And that means an independent investigation involving child welfare and the relevant authorities. They, he, by the admission of the search warrant affidavit, by what's omitted, that never happened here. He violated Minnesota law and the whole process he went about it. But here's why that is. In New York, they did a study. Guess what percentage of, of, of child neglect and abuse reports turned out to be true? Well, what would you guess the percentage was? 15%. 4%. 4%. Anybody familiar with this world knows the first way you get payback at somebody is you report neglect, you report abuse. Oh, I'm pretty sure they're abusing. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw it at the start. Uh, oh, no, I, just want, I want to bring this up. Like, it's it's wild. Listen to this. Mike, Mike Pierce, children at church saying they are hungry didn't say when they last ate. They could simply mean they didn't eat before coming to church. And we'll eat later. Oh, okay. So I, I thought that was just, uh, first of all, none no, of that's in the afternoon. Point. But I mean, none, 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 I'm none, hungry? But the I'm details like, that's not malnourishment. That doesn't reach the stage well, no, of malnourishment. First, well, these details aren't even in there that they that the, the details. I thought that was saying as a matter presupposing that as a matter of fact. It does first of all, everybody who's had kids know they will skip breakfast or they won't eat it because they don't like scrambled eggs. And then an hour later they complain about being hungry. And this is I'm telling you, this is not to pass off or pardon or excuse what I have observed of Nick's behavior. I'll say it every day of the week. I think he needs help. And I think he should, whether or not he thinks he needs help, he should be checking in for help regardless because it will help in all respects of this case. But we're looking at the affidavit without infusing what we think or what we know of Rakeda extracurricularly. Exactly. Uh, Robert, uh, another one because here. That's how you read an affidavit. You don't read an affidavit. I mean, here's some of the other genius legal advice from the nitwits on social media and Twitter. 
then it's after, well, uh, but uh, Barnes, uh, they, they found drugs. Uh, hello, everybody. If the Fourth Amendment could be routinely and regularly violated anytime you found evidence of a crime, there would be no Fourth Amendment. All search warrant challenges, guess what? Guess what context they happen in? In criminal cases. They happen in criminal cases because they found something. So the fact you don't get to retroactively uh, uh, justify a warrant because, hey, turns out my suspicion was right. That's not how the Fourth Amendment works. It's, it's all, I was about to say something else about this. Oh, yes. And not to equate cocaine and methane or whatever ketamine to marijuana. But once upon a time, marijuana was illegal and in a class, oh, whatever yes. the felony was, and you get busted with that. You're damn right. You're going to try to question the warrant that allowed them to go find marijuana in your place. Uh, and then I did have the I did have the secondary thought. Look, I don't people say Nick is on some sort of uh, prescription medication. I don't know this. I have no personal knowledge of this. If it's true, one could imagine that potentially for the purposes of enhancing the charges after they raid, they were at 26.2 grams, which brought it 1.2 grams over the threshold of 25. If no, they made it- including the packaging, well, by the way. That, no, the if, packaging, it was less than 20. And, and, and if it included, I don't know if people crush up prescription meds for whatever the reason. If it accidentally includes prescription meds, fine, he's in possession, no, or but you bumped Bear, it up to 20. Say it again. Bear pointed out, and some others have pointed out, often uh, there was a, a good criminal law commentator on uh, legal mindset uh, that pointed out that in some jurisdictions, it has to only be the illegal substance, and often illegal substances mixed with other substances that are not illegal, mm -hmm. and that would reduce it. And for those that don't know, the basically the difference is twenty five grams makes it more than twenty five grams makes it uh, puts a whole different level. Twenty five year maximum versus whatever yeah. under twenty five. Like a five and a half year at minimum media, uh, sentence for a first time offender. Less than twenty five, you're in a totally different territory. So, by the way, that was a sign to me when I read that. I was like, oh, this is a biased cop who's out to get somebody. He's manufacturing a false charge based on inflating, trying to pretend that the packaging, the packaging includes the uh, weight for a legal substance. So, but basically the big statement everybody's focused on is, is the fourth, yeah, it's fourth hand hearsay, has no temporal relevance, uh, isn't connected up to anything. Didn't come directly from the kids. Didn't correctly come from a teacher. Couldn't have come from their teacher because it's a preschool teacher, and all of them are outside of preschool. Uh, and, and even if you it was taken as true, it doesn't constitute child abuse or neglect on its face. Uh, so, so, we, so we already have the pastor's church gossip doesn't add up to anything. Wait, Barbara, let, let me now we get category two and category three of evidence, which is the uh, uh, the social media troll. Uh, and the, uh, I mean, that's his persona, by the way, is that, you know, that's kind of what he does. The, uh, and, and, and then the, the cops psychoanalysis, uh, but we'll, we'll get, video. before we get there, I want to finish the paragraph because it, it went for, you know, the, the allegations of the child neglect are the serious ones and that's what they are. But then the rest are, I would say funny, but it's tragic. Nicholas, this is reading from paragraph, the first paragraph of page three, Nicholas was reported to being lethargic and appeared high or drugged driving a car around. Reported. By whom? Yeah. I don't know. This is this. A, another individual advised the reported, that I presume that means the reporter, there's a typo. Another individual advised the reporter that Nicholas will walk out randomly during sermons at church and have noticed behavioral changes in him. I, I have pre This could be good for an intervention, not necessarily for a search warrant. It was yeah. recently alleged. After he's walking out of your sermons. Listen to this, Robert. I mean, uh, we know there's something wrong. Now. Uh, let's raid the house. He's it walking was, out of your sermons, Pastor. It was alleged. Kayla. It was alleged. Kayla looks anorexic, and Nicholas has lost a substantial amount of weight recently. One oh, individual. Oh, you haven't been using Ozempic, everybody out there. Bam! They're going to be knocking down your doors. Well, I can tell. I can tell you one thing. I mean, I've been eating a, a healthy Amos Miller product. People are the remember the experience was like. I think Barnes own cocaine. Look at all that energy he gets after he drinks Amos Miller's milk. I, I guess according to these genius legal geniuses online, they should be raiding my house tomorrow. I got. I got to read this, Robert, because it's actually amazing. One in. Uh... They look like they lost weight. One individual described Nicholas of having injection or track marks on his arms. I, this, okay. The reporter reiterated concerns for possible neglect and or controlled substance use within the home. This is where I, I hadn't made the distinction. And of, or. No, it's the or. Well, but, I mean, but also. That's, that's the classic definition of not probable cause. 
Well, is it not a legal argument? It says possible cause. I mean, you said it, but like probable, not possible. And this so, is like, yeah, they're even saying problem number one. Okay. Problem number two is it's or. It's or. Boo. What you have is a corrupt cop writing a fake warrant that he's mislead, that he's throwing things in together in ways that are temporally disconnected, authorship wise disconnected, to create a false impression of something that's actually not even factually alleged by anybody with specific. Yeah, and, and everybody who's been watching Rakeda or the recent meltdown streams, whether or not they think it's acting, will say, oh, well, it, this fits with what I already believe, therefore... No, that's not the definition. That's not how we approach a search warrant. We look at the four corners of the warrant. What is alleged in it? Is it, does, is it independently confirmed? Is it based on firsthand observation? Uh, is it based on reliable testimony? And here you have a guy that's throwing together hodgepods of church gossip. And then next he goes, well, don't worry. If you don't like the church gossip, I got social media gossip to Listen go to with this. it. The affiant, uh, your affiant states that Rakeda and Imholtz uh, started to review Rakeda and Imholtz social media blogs. The blogs are commonly related to legal issues, high profile cases. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Listen to this. Uh, Nicholas is a licensed attorney. Nicholas is known to drink alcoholic beverages excessively on these video blogs. I immediately noted that Nicholas's appearance in recent months has changed. I don't know that anybody can say that definitively, but to set that aside, in videos from January compared to May, Nicholas appeared to have lost weight, appears tired, and overall appears, quote, strung out, end quote, and it's in quotes in the, in the affidavit. If you appear tired, and you appear lethargic, and you lose weight, Probable cause to read your no, 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 no. He appears, according to in, Nate the lawyer. It's in quotes in the affidavit. He appears, quote, strung out, common with controlled substance users. The bottom line, Robert, I might agree with this. I, I, I might agree with it that he doesn't look well and I think he needs help. But hold, this is the affidavit of the, of the re and some people are going to say. grounds for you to raid your neighbor's house that, you know, you know ticked you off last week. Well, no, but. Right? And, and you know, the hey, is, by the way, officer, uh, appears kind of high. Appears very, appears high. Um, appears strung out. Uh, listen what's to your this. evidence? Robert, listen to this. Nicholas has been the victim. Oh, he has his studio in his basement. Okay, fine. Nicholas has been the victim of swatting phone calls and is known to your affiant and the county sheriff because of these calls. When the county sheriff responded to these calls, they were at his address. So this guy's responded what, to notice what's, what, what's he omitting? That he was one of the cops that was there, possibly? Not only that, what else is he omitting? That they were all false. That they were all false. I didn't pick that up. Damn it. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. because it, you can only know it by what's missing from the affidavit. Now, a competent judge would have found this. That suggests the judge who issued this warrant is compromised in some manner. The it, uh, it because that's what is there. I mean, this is why, like, it's astounding to me that you know people that are otherwise skeptical of law enforcement in a wide range of settings are just discarding. All of their is law there, enforcement skepticism because of what they personally feel about Nick Rick. Yeah, well, what they personally believe they know. I mean, or what right. they personally right. know. But the bottom, listen to this. But that's not in the warrant. It's not in the And it says, it should be noted that in the recent videos of April, she also appears tired, lethargic, and strung out as well. Uh, then we go into the Rukitas. They're in the same room in the background. They seem to be the same. At one point during Imhold's video, Nicholas walks into the background and grabs an item, which, which would show that the background is not a backdrop and a curtain lays out the actual room. Oh, what do you freaking do? Uh, in, on May 22nd, in a video blog, Nicholas uh, talked about Nicholas and insinuated controlled substances use and also referred to a video blog that Nicholas put online. They're talking now, about what they talk about. They talk listen, about so his second big source of information is some other rando on the internet who insinuated, insinuated, well, what did he say? Why isn't that in the affidavit? Oh, because he never actually said anything. The, he said he personally used drugs, illegal drugs. That's what this guy did. He didn't say Nick Riccata did. So, no, also, but, they're, but they're talking about a controlled substance. Insinuated. Okay. Well, you're right. It's just controlled substance. Insinuated some sort of controlled substance. Anyway, so you got a rando on the internet spreading social media gossip who only talks about his own use. And that's supposed to be probable cause to raid somebody's house? You got to be kidding me. Here, they're talking about the basement studio. He appears in the video to be, this is talking about Nick, the last one that was the bad one. He appears to be drinking alcoholic beverages and eventually appears under the influence of a substance or substance. The entire blog is four hours, four minutes long, approximately two hours and 46 minutes into the video. He leaves to go to the restroom. When he returns at 2.50... 
He appears to be making an excited look and has a white powdery substance on his nose. I didn't see that. Your affiant he, believes. And, and knows what's missing. The why picture. isn't the why isn't there a picture? Why your isn't affiant there, why isn't there expert photographic evidence? Why your, isn't there oh, why isn't the video included? Because he knows if he does any of those three, he might get exposed for making up his own version of what he saw. And so consequently, I mean this this warrant screams bogus warrant by corrupt cop. That's Robert what the Rurkata warrant screams. Listen to bogus this. warrant by corrupt cop. You're I guess the lawyer and some others are former cops, so they like to defend cops. But the the rest of the law too that isn't so uh, doesn't have that pro cop leaning should look at this objectively. Take the name Rakeda out. Stick. It's I often do this to show people motivated reasoning. I like okay political accusation. Somebody you don't like. So uh, let's see if you would still believe the facts if I put in somebody you do like, right? So if you say Biden did da 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 da, so. Biden haters would be like, absolutely. Well, or, or, or take say, some... here's the factual basis for it or the legal basis for it. But you take the change it to Trump or vice versa, and you'll suddenly see reversal. So that's a, a way to train your mind to do good legal analysis. Take the name of Nick Ricada out, make this rando case anywhere in the world, put in the same set of facts. Is that probable cause? Find one case in the country. Well, says. listen to this. Your affiant believes his behavior is indicative of central nervous system stimulants. Do I know how many times have people accused me? That's <laughs> a lo local rando cop. Small town cop is now an expert on the central nervous system. Not just that. Like how many times have I been issue of the central nervous system and what and what products could create and produce that? How what many times? No, but how many times have people on the internet accused me of being on ADHD, too much caffeine, cocaine, or up? What? It's so. I get the, people but, in the chat right now accusing me of being high. Well, I but mean, Robert, the bottom line is all the time. But everybody, everybody might have their personal knowledge of of Nick's. Uh, you know what he talks about, what they right, know of him. So they're complaining. Got to throw that out. Yep. You got a rando cop. If this is probable cause, folks, everybody's house can get raided tomorrow. Well, that's because that's because people out there can say, "Okay, I'm a cop." I think your behavior is consistent with illegal controlled substance use. Got to raid your house. Your affiant believes, based on training and experience, as well as the behavior of Nicholas, that 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 he ingested this white powdery substance through his nasal cavity while off camera. I, this is reading like a joke. The more you read, you read through it, your affiant no, knows he believes that he's he snorted way, it through I'll, the I'll nose. Quote a, a, a wise statement from our locals chat. That's the real smart people, folks. The uh, bogus warrant by corrupt cop. Signed off by vengeful judge. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, of, of a vulnerable target who talks about his improper behavior loudly and vocally and misbehaves on the internet. And so it makes him an easy target. And who's the biggest political critic of the local corruption in the lat small town. Listen to this, okay, that he took the white powder off camera. Your affiant knows through training and experience that ingesting controlled substances through a nasal cavity is a common among controlled substance users and is often referred to as, quote, snorting. Your affiant also noted that throughout the video, Nicholas is so under- trying to pretend that is some form of expertise? It, Let me explain the expertise of uh, how people ingest uh, certain forms of drugs. Uh, uh, they, they do this little thing where they, they roll things up, you see, and then they put the powder down to, like this. And, and I only know this because I'm an expert. And You're asking. And they call it snorting, you see. Yeah, I'm an expert. <laughs> I mean, when you read that, it's, like, it's not funny because there's Between also. Nick, the lawyer, this is clearly probable cause. Nick, You're go back to constitutional law class. You Your it. affiant also noted that throughout the video, Nicholas is so under the influence of a substance to the point he has to close one eye to read his screen, rambles, and slurs his speech. Close one eye is being blackout drunk to me, but not on coke. I don't know. I've never done coke in my entire life because so I'm sure I'll right. die the first time. If I time. close my one eye, I slur anything, and I look a little tired, now you can raid my house. But, and listen to this, Robert. Holy shit. Okay, uh, he, he's unable to read the screen. Uh, he's so under the influence, he's closing one eye, rambles, and slurs the speech. Nicholas would obviously not be able to care for his children in this state of intoxication. Listen to that. So he's saying that is child. Now, first of all, there's no connection. Okay. So now you're saying anybody who ever is uh, for any reason. On uh, video being drunk off their asses on the internet. I can name a few names. Intoxicated or whatever. Um, or too sleepy, lethargic, because he considers that a criminal act. Uh, or evidence of probable cause for crime. Is now grounds to take your kids away and raid your house. Hello, people. Can you not realize how dangerous it would be to allow this to be established precedent anywhere? 
any place, any time. Wow. Um, and I think, well, that's, that's, that's it for the relevant part. Let me see yeah. here if I missed anything. So that's the embarrassment joke crack of a corrupt case against Nick Ricada in the state of Minnesota. Well, I mean, it's also like anybody, 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 anybody shit faced at anybody shit faced at a bar at a Christmas party at their, at new year's Eve in their house at, by the way, it's at four in the morning from what I understand would be it's, and there's two other adults oh. in the house, allegedly, uh, and even and by no, the affidavit. The, I should know all the things that are omitted. Potential bias of the preacher. Uh, so if this guy watches, and he watched that particular Nick video, but why, he says he's been watching Nick's videos, according to the cop, the, uh, then he would know that Nick has been particularly critical of this preacher. So uh, that would give the preacher potential bias in his reporting. At a minimum, there's nothing about the preacher's test uh, reporting that makes it have an uh, in, uh, evidence of reliability under the probable cause standard. That's things against penal interest, against self-interest. Thing, that's just not here. So it, and the way to think of it, when you're trying to think of reliability, what, what are the courts using? They're using the terminology from hearsay, right? That sometimes a certain kind of statement, even though it's hearsay, will say is reliable because it's a statement against interest. It's a, it's a, a, it's a statement uh, in a moment of excitement. Uh, there's all of the excited utterance. There's all of these exceptions where we say, well, you know what? We normally wouldn't trust an out-of-court statement, but in this case, we will because of something about the nature of that out-of-court statement or the nature of the individual giving. Let me, uh, Ep didn't, EP didn't in Rumble. Nose covered in powder for the world to see on a recorded live stream. Ep didn't, please post that picture. Like, I, and I'm not no, saying this to make fun of it. Because the Show cop it. didn't. The no, but, cop but I, I, didn't I, post it. I haven't seen it, and and I and I the video that people and, see and remember from video. a judge's perspective, you're just reading that warrant. You'd be wondering, okay, why why isn't there any follow up investigation? Why wasn't there an initial investigation? Why isn't child welfare involved? As well, this, state so, law Robert, requires? Th this is the other question I had because some people are going to say if that's not probable cause, what would be probable cause in the inventory uh, of probable evidence? Probable cause. Well, that's it, what would be probable cause. What's not probable cause doesn't become probable cause because you want it to be. But probable cause would be, uh, I don't Independent know. Independent indicia. <laughs> like, here's how it's supposed to work. You get that first inquiry. You follow up. You talk to those four individuals. You talk to the teacher. You talk to other people with direct knowledge of the kids. That that uh, you, you talk to others that might have direct information. You think this social media blogger person is reliable, you go get a statement from that social media blogger person. You bring in actual experts to analyze any forensic evidence, whether video or otherwise. Then you usually you do a wellness check. You follow up with a child welfare official coming by the house, asking to talk to folks, asking to take a check in, asking to do things. These are, these are done every day in America. This is protocol. He breached all of it. Why did he breach all of it? Why did he exclude the fact that he breached all of it? So there's the there's the affirmative material omissions, leaving out the, the the pastor's bias, leaving out the bias of any other church witnesses, leaving out the cop's own potential bias, leaving out that a judge reviewing the warrant might have a bias, leaving out that the social media blogger has a screaming bias. The guy thinks Rakeda stole his wife and caused his divorce. And it's his only way of making money is talking crap about Mercator. That's the kind of information that is material to an issuance of a probable cause warrant in evaluating the reliability of any individual statement. And yet, so that's material omissions. That by itself is grounds to find the probable cause warrant was secured with uh, material omissions, effectively perjury, uh, and fraud upon the court. That also leads to suppression of all evidence uh, and an illegal, unlawful search warrant. But then you get to the separate thing of all the rules he violated and ask yourself why. Why is he? It's because he's obsessed with getting Nick and he's scared that if anybody else is involved, they won't agree with him. He's scared that if anybody else is involved, they won't confirm these rumors and gossip. He's scared that if anybody else is involved, Nick will get tipped off before he gets to raid the house. You got a corrupt cop looking. Uh, a vengeful, vindictive cop looking to get Nick Ricada, well, and he's I, I, willing to break the law and violate the Constitution to do it. And apparently, some folks in Law Tube and the social media world are just fine with that, as long as the target is the right one in their view.
I'm going to bring this up just because I spotted it before. Legal mindset. If this is true that legal mindset is even suggesting this, it's a stupid thing to suggest. Is saying legal Barnes. Mind, yeah, may all have these a, people should be smart. If, well, well, they, if any of these people are saying this, he invited me on the show yesterday. I didn't. I didn't go on. Uh, I because I had a lot of work. You know, it was Memorial Day. Uh, I, I we're filing a opposition today in a uh, uh, an Amos Miller uh, opposition brief that is due the end of the uh, business day. Uh, but any of these people that are just going out, yep. Look, you take pot shots at me, have at it, no problem. Take, you know, uh, defame the Constitution of the United States, and I got a problem. And and I and I'll start calling people out by individual. Well, but let, some let of me... these people are legal. I mean, some of these people are are just flat out grifting, knowing that hey, they even though they Nick made them famous, they're like, oh, I can bash Nick now and make a bunch of money on YouTube. I can make a bunch of money in these other places. Uh, I have no contractual obligation or relationship. Well, but I don't even. I don't even understand. Ever. I don't have a contractual relationship with Rumble. I, well, I, don't have I mean, a contractual uh, relationship with Nick Ricada. Well, no. Other, we we drafted the terms, but first of all, I don't know. I don't, yeah, that was years ago. I have no ongoing contract where we helped they design their terms to maximize free speech on Rumble. And we did it in an extreme discount Barnes level. may have a contract about free speech. Yeah, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand this. To defend Nick due to Rumble Association, first of all, it's not true. Second of all, I don't even know what, really what Nick, I don't know what Nick's is. On this route, look, I'm smarter than almost all of these people, just to put it bluntly. The And so if you're going to come at me, you better be well-informed. You better be well-educated. You better not lie and libel. And you better stand up for the Constitution. You can have a different opinion of the Constitution. That's fine. But you better stand up for it. Now, if it's as bad as Nate the lawyer's opinion is, I'm going to show you why it's as bad. I'm not going to question Nate's ethics or motivation. I'm going to say his legal analysis is crap. But the but some of these people, like potentially Sean, I mean, we're seeing it all over the internet. We're seeing people that, that I mean, to me, I take object. If, if, if somebody helped you get prominent, and then because of that, you have a lot of his old audience, and you turn around and and attack him so that you can boost yourself on social media. I if don't he, respect you. If I he deserves it, Robert. You. If he deserved it uh, or deserves it, and if it turned out that in that in that probable cause warrant or certain application for warrant, there were allegations of or findings of child abuse. Uh, right. There's it's allegations crazy. of neglect. They're, they're in there. But the also, Robert, if they had gone in and but they're seen. Crap. They're utter well, crap. They but don't the, rise to probable cause at all. In the inventory of evidence, if they had seen evidence of child neglect, would that have found its way into the evidence um, in the evidence sheet there? Uh, what is it? The property inventory sheet? Oh, of course. Sheet? Of course. And it, 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 well, it would have been, I told people from day one, with this cop having an obvious bias that you can reasonably infer from the detention warrant, that if he had any really bad facts, it would be in the detention warrant because he's out to get Rakeda and it would be in the criminal complaint. And when it wasn't there, I was like, guess what, folks? It ain't going to be in the probable cause affidavit. Mm -hmm. But even I have to admit, this is one of the worst probable cause affidavits I've ever read. This is a joke. This is an embarrassment. Okay, This, this is a crop. Just so we don't get mad with, with no no shade or undue oh, shade. Oh, sorry, good. It was posed well, said, as a question. Be no, good it's, it's a, mindset. Don't, don't, uh, it was, I don't, I don't, I don't know what it's like. Don't go along with any of the grifters out there I, wanting to make false accusations in order to enrich themselves. No, I, I don't do that. Especially to defame the Constitution. And then we got here. Oh, hold on a second. I just popped this up. We're going we're gonna to go over after we're done with this to rumble and talk about the other stuff of the day. The biggest red flag. Oh, yeah, we with got, this we got Trump's closing arguments. We yeah, got I got a I, COVID vaccine mandate win. Uh, the biggest red, this is from Jim tells you the biggest red flag with this warrant is the judge who signed off on the probable cause was the very judge. He has been trashing on his streams. This warrant stinks and does not comport with the U S Supreme court of Illinois versus Gates for specificity. Yes, and, and, and I'll say the bottom line, if nay, if Nick squeaks out of this, if he manages to get this, all of this quashed and tossed, I still think he needs to really, um, get help and fix and, and just be, I think he needs I th on the on the drinking part because I think I, I said this going back a long time. You know, getting too drunk and saying stupid things is a sign of a problem. You might be functional in other respects, and it might be part of the show, and you think people want to see it. But getting drunk, saying stupid things, getting sued, um, getting getting strikes—that's an indication of a problem. But there's problems, and then if this is true, child neglect and detriment, There's well, problems. There's there's real problems when the cops and the courts are drunk on abusing our constitution. That's the problem because. Whatever Nick's issues are, Nick's issues are Nick's, the Nick's and his family. Violating the Constitution impacts all of us and endangers all of us. That's not just child endangerment. That's America endangerment. And that's the kind of crime I take very seriously. 
And that's what the, it appears here, as was well said in our Viva Barnes Law locals.com live chat. If you want to read the warrant, if you want to see my breakdown of it, it's there as part of the Barnes Law School section, uh, and, and you can get it there. But as well said in the in the in the locals chat, this is a bogus warrant by a corrupt cop issued by a vengeful judge, and it's being apologized for by conflicted people on social media and in the law tube community who should be embarrassed that they have disgraced the protecting our constitution as badly as they have over the last several days. Is it, am I wrong or should they have um, blacked out the address when releasing that probable cause? No one has been ar- swatted. There's an argument for that. Uh, generally courts don't. They generally only uh, redact uh, information like social security numbers, credit card numbers, uh, bank accounts, things of that nature. Well, I, just, I just thought it was particularly malicious to remind everyone, hey, he's been swatted and here's oh, the address yeah. if you want to do it again. You, you're right. That's a very good po- point. And that's clearly what this this cop is. It was it was it was it was back to back sentences could through this, though. You know, the it, it, normally they get away with this because it's in small towns because some local guy who's only got a local lawyer doesn't want to upset the system. You know, the one downside to going after somebody like Ricardo, uh is that he is uh, has a certain national notoriety, and he will have a smart, intelligent, legal, out, constitutional, caring allies on his side. And so corrupt cops should have probably thought of that before they went this route. But their ego got ahead of them, or they're just so accustomed to doing it, like the FBI's defense when they went after Trump, uh, to uh, that they, they just thought they could get away with it. But that's a nice transition. We can either transition the Eighth Circuit case or the Trump closing Let's, arguments. Well, first of all, what we're going to do is I'm going to end this and make sure I didn't miss any rumble rants. Or do we have any tips? We have a lot of tips here. Hold on. Let's do the tips before we end on YouTube. Abraham P. says, my niece and nephews complain about being hungry when they can't have junk food and they won't want to eat a real meal since kids complain. Makes no difference. Roostang says, one, interweb trolls and grifters bashing Ricada when he's struggling. Two, Barnes points out the gross inaccuracies and missing info in the Ricada affidavit. Three, interweb trolls and grifters turn on Barnes. Four, I look forward to seeing Barnes help these trolls and grifters see how woefully unqualified they are to judge Nick over the Constitution. Doug Lee fan, five bucks, says, where is all Ricada support from the LGBTQ plus community for his alternative lifestyle? Viva, this is from Mighty Pay. Would you please post the affidavit with the addresses re- info redacted so we can see it for ourselves? It's much easier. Uh, I will do. I just, I only got it a few minutes before the stream and I did not want to accidentally fail to omit, uh, omit to redact an, uh, the address because I'm not contributing to that. Uh, the, oh, still there, Viva? Yep. Oh, am I still here? Yeah. Did I freeze? Oh. I oh, just momentarily froze. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to, yeah, my internet now, I'm down to two bars. I'm going to, we're going to end this on YouTube. We're going to talk Trump and uh, the other decision. What else big, big COVID vaccine mandate decision. Employer discrimination out of the Eighth Circuit. Big decision that everybody was watching. EEOC got involved in it. I've also posted a highlighted version of the decision at vivabarneslaw.locals.com uh, where you can digest it for yourself or comment on it. Same with the Ricada arrest warrant and my comments on it. There's an ongoing discussion there uh, in the reply thread. I'll respond to them. I routinely do uh, read uh, pretty much everything posted at vivabarneslaw.locals.com. But uh, yeah, we got, and then we got Trump closing arguments today. Let's see how good they are. We're halfway through. Okay, so we're ending it on YouTube. We're going to stay live on Rumble and vivabarneslaw.locals.com. Ending on YouTube now. (laughs) Boom. Okay, Robert. Look, I haven't been able to. uh, Right. I got to grab something real quick. But don't, right back. don't don't come back with powder on your nose, Rob. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. Too soon. Too soon. Um, I've been watching the clip. Well, hold on. There's there's. Let me see. I had one thing here. I'll take Barnes out until he comes back. Hold on. Hold on. Cancel this. Remove. I'll bring him back when I see him come back. Um, I've been watching the closing arguments. Yeah, let's talk about E. Jean Carroll. Okay. Before Barnes gets back, I have to pee. Also, I have to break it a second when Barnes gets back. Uh, e. Jean Carroll threatening to sue Trump again, or at least suggesting that it's on the table because she didn't like what he has to say. The, 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 it's like E. Jean Carroll sitting there looking at like, she's like playing lotto or I don't even know what the analogy is. She's just like, uh, uh, she got her cash cow with this Kaplan judge and the Kaplan lawyer and the, the bullcrap case. Close this here. 
Uh, Rob Roberta Kaplan, an attorney for the writer E. Jean Carroll, reportedly said all options are on the table after former President Trump once again dis disparaged her client. How dare he disparage the batshit crazy lady who fabricated a 30 plus year old story of rape named of cat vagina tea fireball says rape is sexy. How dare he disparage her? She who I believe cannot be disparaged. Okay. Trump on Monday used his true social platform to rant about the damages he has been ordered to pay Carol in recent months. He also claimed he'd, quote, never met her. That's, I probably believe that. Or no, he did, because there's a picture of them. Has no memory of, of remembering her. Yada, yada, yada. So they're threatening to sue again. I had to go find the post to see just how bad the disparagement was. And we're going to read it together right now. The disparagement came by way of true social posts. Is this it right here? This is it. Listen to this. Let's see if... I'll, I'll, I'll be objective um, in terms of critical. Uh, okay, I'll use the cookies. Donald Trump, happy Memorial Day to all, including the human scum that is working so hard to destroy our once great country. And to the radical left, Trump hating federal... I thought that said feral judge, which might have been more accurate. Federal judge in the New York, in New York, that presided over, get this, Two separate trials that awarded a woman who I have never, it should be whom I have never met, Donald, who I never met before, a quick handshake at a celebrity event 25 years ago, doesn't count, $91 million for defamation. In fairness, Donald, $65 million punitive, $11 million, uh, what is it, a defamation rehabilitation program? She didn't know when the so-called event took place sometime in the 90s, never filed a police report, didn't have to produce the dress, which she didn't exist, apparently, that she threatened me with. It showed negative. I don't get that. And sung my praises in the first half of her CNN interview with Allison Cooper, <laughs> but changed her tune in the second half. Gee, I wonder why, under appeal, the rape charge was dropped by a jury or Arthur Engron. Oh, then we got to... Well, the rape charge was dropped by a jury, but brought back by that corrupt Judge Kaplan, who says, yeah, even though the jury found him not liable for rape, ah, still rape. So you get to say it, people, and, and idiots run with it. Or Arthur Engeron, New York nipple judge, the state wacko judge who fined me almost $500 million under appeal for doing nothing wrong, used a statute that has never been used before, gave no jury, gave me no jury, Mar-a-Lago, $18 million, now for Mershaw. I, uh, I agree with that statement. Is Barnes not back yet? Barnes is not back yet. Um, that's that's the it's it's so she's gonna sue him again. Okay. Should, should, third defamation case. A hundred billion dollars. It should be a billion dollars for defamation this time around, right? Because because uh, what was the original finding was five million, eighty-five million, it had eight hundred and fifty million. That's what it has to be. Barnes, I'm bringing you back. Uh so are you, are you drinking diet monster? Of course, zero monster, monster zero, zero sugar. Um, how many milligrams of caffeine are in that entire bottle? I'm taking a lot. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Those big cans, when they are sugar full, when they do not have no sugar, they have over 100% of your daily intake of sugar. Not that you shouldn't, oh, but also the easy. chemicals in that, Robert, can't be good. Um, okay, closing arguments. I haven't, I've been trying to keep up, but I got distracted by the Rakeda affidavit or the whatever it is, the affidavit for probable cause, whatever the term is for that thing. Um, from what I've seen, Robert, I, I felt they were getting a little bit, the, the defense is going first. And the prosecution ends? Is that normal? I thought that was weird. No, the, I mean, uh, unless, you know, I haven't gone to trial. I've done New York criminal cases, but I've never uh, gone all the way down to the trial. I uh, got good resolutions before the trial. And so the, um, uh, it, it, by the way, that's like someone in Ricada's position. You raise all the constitutional issues. You show how robust they are. That's how you usually get a deal for diversion, do rehab for two years, et cetera, by the way, for people out there wondering about how that would work tactically or strat strategically. Most of my constitutional issues never reach court because the government recognizes their risk. Now, not all cases, like the Amos Miller case, they just are obsessed with violating the Constitution. But the and like when in Pennsylvania, that case that the judge ordered me to trial on on 24 hours notice after getting the case, this is the uh, woman. This is the woman who recorded the court hearing herself to expose corruption, and then uh, was criminally charged. Exactly for exposing okay. court corruption. Uh, you know, and the, the, you know, kind of the Ricada treatment sounds like uh, what we're getting on the search warrant. But the uh, uh, in that case, uh, there was the only case I'd ever been in. So typically in America, prosecutor goes first, defense goes second, and then prosecutor goes last. The reason why prosecutor goes last in that scenario is prosecutor has the burden. 
And so they go last because they have the burden of proof. In a civil case, it's typically just plaintiff to defend it. And then, but then again, and depending on which state you're in, then the plaintiff gets a rebuttal. And the plaintiff's rebuttal is based on, again, the plaintiff bearing the burden of proof. This in Pennsylvania, uh, the first time I discovered the judge was going to have me go first is when he said, uh, Mr. Barnes, you're up. I mean, I hadn't even, I had planned on using the prosecution to prepare my closing or, you know, to, to finally map it out. And I was like, oh, I got, I, I got to do this live. Um, the, uh, and you could, you could kind of tell the judge kind of got a kick out of how you probably didn't know that was coming. Did you Barnes? Uh, but did just fine. Had several jurors hold out, uh, uh, you know, against despite the judge not allowing any evidence in that helps me pretty much helps my client not allowing cross examination on the key areas of impeachment and instructing the jury in a way that usually secure guaranteed conviction with a jury pool that was already a lynching jury pool to begin with. I still almost got uh, a, a, at least a mistrial, but uh, but so yeah, I, I maybe that's New York and I don't know. I thought I thought that was weird. The defense going that they, they get the they get the trial. last word. Um, yeah, plus you don't as a defense lawyer you don't know what the prosecutor is going to say, so you're stuck in a situation of having to anticipate. Well, I just um, say it's, it's a, a matter of equity. Innocence until proven guilty should, in theory, give you the the right to the last word when it comes to closing arguments. Um, the judge did not yet issue a ruling or will not dismiss. I'm not sure if he. The headlines say skirted around rendering a decision on the motion to dismiss or the directed verdict with the, the criminal equivalent. I don't know if he skirted around it or said no and is not coming back on that, but no decision I, I on that. It's usually a no, but they can always revisit it after the verdict. Yeah, well, that's it, what's he going to he's going to let them come down with a guilty verdict and then say, I'm overturning it. But yeah, you can run with your headlines because he got convicted, even though he shouldn't have. That's not going to happen. Uh, it was in it was in the Bihan Rafikian case, the Michael Flynn case, where Bihan Rafikian got convicted for FARA violations. FARA or NARA? It's one of the other. It's FARA, foreign agent. And yeah. then the judge uh, reversed it after the fact. And then people accuse me of being biased because I say, I like it when he does that, but I don't like it when Angeron uses the, the directed verdict. But some of these cases are, are, are bullcrap. You got to take them on their face. Uh, I mean, we can only follow this through inner city press. To me, it seems that the, the opening or the closing arguments for Trump or, I don't know, you feel like you have to address all of the rubbish, but maybe less is more. I, I, what's, what's your take? My strategy would be, and I say this universally, if, if you're talking about what the other side is talking about, then chances are you've already kind of lost. You, it's, what my, it's what Trump really believes himself, uh, is what my brother taught me when I was a kid. He who defines the terms wins the debate. So don't let the other side define the terms. And so I wouldn't let the other side frame the issue. I would just, you know, go through and, and give the narrative. And you need a moral narrative to go with the legal narrative to go with the factual narrative. And uh, it looked like they were doing decent, maybe not spectacular, uh, which I think has been the defense in general. I thought it's been decent, maybe not spectacular. Difficult circumstances, clearly, with a rogue judge and a uh, difficult in a hostile jury pool uh, and corrupt perjuring witnesses. Uh, but I think, you know, they're, they're going to hammer. It appeared they were hammering. I, I guess we can pull up inner city press to see what he said. I only saw a bit of what was being reported, but oh, what oh, I yeah. saw was they were hammering away at that. This whole case hinges on Cohen and Cohen lies about everything. He lied to you right in front of you during the trial. That's how bad a liar he is. How in the world can you convict beyond a reasonable doubt? When you have to believe Cohen to believe the entry was fraudulent, to believe the uh, that Trump knew the entry was fraudulent, and to believe that the fraud involved defrauding the voters of New York. Uh, All of this, that depends entirely, solely, exclusively on, on Michael Cohen, believing Michael Cohen beyond a reasonable doubt. Robert, I'm going to bring this up because this is, this is back to Ricada just for a moment because someone in the chat on Rumble said, in case I missed it, this is the alleged huh. video showing what some are arguing is clear white powder on his nose. I'm just going to play it. It was up, guys. How's it going? Yeah, I'm sorry. That's not clear white powder on the nose. Oh, sure. So I'll stop it. There. We don't need to watch. If that's, if that's the best of it, I mean, I can see how someone makes the argument, but I can also see that that's someone's going to say, yeah. what, what the hell are you seeing? Yeah, exactly. And uh, why didn't the cop include the photo or the video? Well, it's, it's, the it, cop it, knows somebody would look at it and go, or have an independent forensic examiner review it, um, uh, because 
they would have concluded otherwise. I mean, if, oh, if, by the if, way, if, we got uh, some potential future uh, uh, merch uh, with some of one of our cool memes. They got a meme of you, Viva. That hold uh, on, in the chat. I, I don't. I, I want to do a poll because I, I can't do the poll. I don't think Rumble has polls yet. We can do one in, in locals, but I, I, I don't want to do it. It's, it's I, that feels dirty, but. If we were to do a poll, I think it would be 50-50 at best. I, I, I maybe someone can do it on Twitter, and I'm not. I'm not going to be oh, the yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Hold on, Lord, I mean, give me the surrender. <laughs> That's a good one, isn't it? Oh yes. Hold on, save the, image uh, as as part of 1776 Law Center. Uh, we're building out some merch. Uh, ran into some trouble with our initial merch, so we're still getting out the first round. So I decided to solve the problem. I want American clothes. I want made in America. Turned out that's really hard at mm -hmm. t-shirt companies. And so I'm going to, I'm getting my own printer so I can, and so I'm going to buy American t-shirts and I'm going to do the, my own, uh, I got you know a bunch of nephews and nieces running around. So uh, uh, they're going to learn how to, to make t-shirts. So uh, one of, uh, we might have that uh, Lord give me serenity one as a, as one of our future, uh, some future That's merch or vivafry.com future merch ah yes it'll be on yeah and, and and i'm working on robert silver dollar one ounce coins they're just a lot i mean they're a lot more expensive than i thought they'd be uh, given the, the even the price of silver per ounce is a lot but then the custom stuff makes it even more and then you know we're working on it but i actually have to get back that it's been two weeks okay let me pull up um inner city press this is where i get totally paranoid because i don't want to accidentally open up my messages not for anything illegal but for disclosing private information so i gotta make sure it's closed it is. Okay, we're going to go up to, uh, we'll scroll down and just do some of this because you can't do the threads when you're not in incognito, but I could open up my Viva Burner account. Or, or, or do they, oh yeah, yeah. Let's say the, uh, so far, uh, Good Logic did the best uh, reading of the transcripts and Robert Gouvet has done the best reading of Inner City Press. Oh, yeah. Inner City the Press should hire Gouvet to do his audio book. Well, I would, uh, that would be, that would be fantastic, but like th there should be, Oh, if only, I mean, inner city press should do his own reading at the end of the day. I mean, he, it would be, it would be much more, it would be totally time consuming, but all right. I, I, I mean, I, I highlighted some, I wish I bookmarked some of them, but Trump's lawyer Blanche, it was booked as a legal expense as they did with anything submitted by the lawyer. There's no other way to categorize it because they're arguing that it's absurd. It's not a crime. Mr. McConaughey said so. Robert, why weren't they allowed I, to have an expert in? Uh, because the judge denied it and excluded it, but, but that's where the, uh, uh, that you know, that's right along the lines of what Dershowitz said and what we said on Sunday is a key point to start out. The let's talk about what happened. A lawyer sent a bill to a bookkeeper at the Trump Organization. The lawyer said the bill was for legal expenses. The Trump Organization bookkeeper uh, uh, sent a check to the lawyer for the invoice listing legal services, and then in their internal bookkeeping wrote, "Paid to lawyer." according to the lawyer for legal services. How is that a fraud? Well, How is that a crime? And, and not that, remember, remember, they had to get around that by Cohen saying, he paid me for services, but I wasn't actually doing any. And so they say, Trump's lawyer Blanche, what makes more, what makes more sense? That President Trump was paying his personal lawyer $35,000 or that Michael Cohen would work for free because that's the alternative. Unless they just don't believe he was working, but in order to believe, sorry, unless they believe he wasn't working, but in which case to believe that he wasn't working means you got to believe a liar. And that, Trump is um, paying thirty-five thousand bucks a month, not thinking his personal attorney is doing any work, but that he's also stealing from that money that he's giving himself. I don't know when they're going to get to the um, when the they're going to get to the yeah to the yeah. investment. Let's see here. Okay, so let's see. He told you about his visit to the White House. I mean, I haven't even. Read. Oh, the red finch is absolutely a lie. Here, the gross it up is a lie. Cohen told you that he had no idea and that he didn't even care. The government is going to suggest some sort of tax scheme, but there's no proof, not even testimony from Mr. Cohen. Not just that he was stealing from the amount that he was then not even paying to the people he said that he was getting paid to, you know, pay up. Um, how far are we? We're two hours behind. Oh God, we're gonna have to go. Let's just see if we can read something real fast. AMI had been doing for Mr. President Trump in the 90s. They purchased stories. Oh, then they try to argue uh, that Schwarzenegger caught and, you know, bought and killed stories. No charges there. There was a guy uh, for, here we go. Who was it, Illinois? What's his name? Oh, yeah. Uh, what's of his course. name? So he starts going through. No Rahm Emanuel. Okay. So objection sustained. So I, objection. Judge sustained. So uh, which, by the way, objections during closing are very rare. That's uh, but it shows how eager the judge is to rig the trial that he's even quickly, summarily sustaining objections during closing argument. Uh, I made argument. the joke. 
I make the joke that if, if the defense objects to the closing arguments of the prosecution, they'll get reprimanded by the judge. No question. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so Pecker told you he spoke with lawyer objection sustained. Pecker has immunity agreement with prosecutors. AMI's deal is probative of nothing. Objection sustained. I mean, it's, it's Robert, it's wild. It's just it, it's a joke. This is a joke. This is the judge routinely, summarily prohibiting the prosecutor, prohibiting the defense lawyer from even presenting closing argument uh, on clearly relevant issues to the closing argument. I want to know how many times they object. I'm going to, I'm going to scroll through that. Uh, let's see here. Trump, Blanche, Stormy Daniels. She denied the incident took place. All right, well, Stormy Daniels is equally lacking credibility. Trump's lawyer, Blanche Davidson, did this to the others. Lindsay Lohan, Charlie Sheen. Um, here is the tape after the election. We're all fucking leveraged. So settle this fucking case now. Prosecution objection sustained. Okay. Uh, one hour there. Back, Trump's lawyer, Blanche. I have a half an hour left. The jurors say they can work late. We might have to make a snack break. Robert, when they go into deliberation, are they going to, they're, they're going to go home, right? There's no sequestering here? Correct. And mm -hmm. and uh, what we're, usually what happens is they're allowed to go home at five or six whenever the court breaks. Okay, and Some then they'll come back. Try to hold them there till eight or nine at night, but that typically doesn't happen. I'm not sure we're going to go through all. I mean, I'll, I'll go through these later on in more detail and maybe do a summary vlog this afternoon. Michael Cohen had an axe to grind last week. And Mr. Costello he told you that when he first met, Cohen told him that President Trump did not know the payments that they were, when they were made in 2016. Cohen, he was under duress, talking suicide. Mr. Cohen lied to you about Mr. Costello. So how many lies does it, are too many? Okay, fine. So he's a liar. Uh, you know, that, that's a decent line. Uh, you know, that maybe that's how you, uh, we could sum up the closing argument. How many lies are too many? Is it one lie? Is it two lies? Well, it's all. Is it, the... <laughs> is it 45 lies? Is it 93 lies? I mean, I mean, is it one lie too many? Let me see here. Uh, Trump, uh, that was perjury. The prosecution on redirect shows you an unremarkable photo that Schiller was with President Trump. Okay. Blanche, Mr. Cohen claimed he made a call on his landline. Oh, yeah, here. But that record and in evidence and objections, how did he's objecting before the question is over? Sidebar. Before, before the statement is even made. Before the question is made. There are no calls to President Trump on that day for Mr. Cohen's phones. And okay, so they clarified the phraseology. Trump's lawyer blanched. There are a lot of ways you can assess credibility. Okay. Which is a good point. That was all of Cohen's evidence that Trump knew is an 86 second phone call that wasn't even made to Trump. That was a call made to Trump's bodyguard, which timing shows was about the uh, Cohen getting harassed by a prankster, 14-year-old prankster and winning Secret Service involved. So the idea that he called Trump's bodyguard, Trump's bodyguard then put, gave the phone to Trump, that Trump managed to say a minute that all of this got confirmed in 86 seconds when a big part of the 86 seconds was talking to the bodyguard about the security issue. And by the way, if the bodyguard had helpful information for the prosecution, they would have introduced him. They never did. That this was just one of Cohen's made up conversations for which there's no documentary proof, for which all reasonable inferences from the available documentary proof rebuts his claims, from which the bookkeeper's testimony rebuts his claims, from which uh, the fact that Cohen is a routine, repeated, flagrant liar and perjurer in every context in which he's ever testified in his life, including in this trial in multiple contexts, says you cannot believe beyond a reasonable doubt. It's well, I mean, you can't believe, period. He's this is the next one. He's an admitted thief. He admitted on stand to stealing tens of thousands of dollars from the Trump organization, yada, yada. Here, listen to this. I, I didn't, I, I missed this part of the trial. The playing of play the audio, Cohen thanks Alvin Bragg, who I met countless times. Blanche, he never met him. He's made millions off President Trump. He's actively objection sustained. How? Like, I, how could that? I don't even, I, I, I don't even know what the question was going to be, but. Trump's lawyer, Blanche, I'm almost done here. Ten reasons for you to have a reasonable doubt. Okay, first, let's, this is going to be the crux. Let me just bookmark this. Um, first, the invoices, Cohen created them. President Trump didn't know about them. Second, Valentine's Day 2017 voucher. No evidence Trump saw the vouchers. No intent to describe. Yeah, yeah, 1099 was fine. What's a 1099 again? That's an um, independent okay, contractor. Yeah, tax form in the United States uh, when an independent contractor is paid. Okay. Uh, similarly, oh yeah, no influence, no, the intend, the intention to influence the 2016 elections, prosecutors will, will try it FICA, but no evidence of any willful violation. 
All right, Trump's lawyer. How do we get to six? We skipped a bunch. AMI would have run the Sejudin. That's the doorman who said that the story they knew was false. The AMI would have run the Sejudin story. No catch and kill. Seventh, McDonald, McD McDougald, I think he meant. Also no catch and kill. She didn't want the story to be published, so it was no catch and kill. Eight, Stormy Daniels was already public. The ninth, the manipulation of evidence. We have caught him. Uh, and then I guess it's the last one. They showed the evidence. The, they showed Mr. Mrs. Trump's text. I mean, that's Mr. To oh, to call her husband. But then there was no call. They did show you the text with the fourteen-year-old caller. We did that because they're fucking lies. It's so it's so unbelievable what they withheld. Uh, if you focus on the evidence, this is a quick not guilty verdict. We'll break oh, to oh, two. Go up oh, to the, their finale about Cohen. Right. There. Uh, Trump's lawyer Blanche Cohen lied to each of you repeatedly. You cannot send someone to prison based prosecution objection sustained. Why? Because it would be the judge oh, who gets... you see the line? They say Tom Brady is the GOAT, greatest of all time. Well, Cohen oh. is the gloat, the greatest liar of all time. Oh, that's not, that's not bad. That's not bad. Right, but uh, see, the, I was thinking if we, we could make merch with... I, I would have figured out some way to rhyme or alliteration. That that tends... There's a reason why, if it doesn't fit, you must have quit. Uh, the Dershowitz had fun with that. He was like, yeah, I know. Well, fit, you must have quit. But the... Uh, it's because of people tend to remember words better that have alliteration or sound similarities. That's why children learn well with like phonetics. In fact, adults trying to learn a foreign language, phonetics is a great access point to learning. It's, it's because of the way our minds work. Um, and so, but gloat's not bad. You know, the uh, uh, it's it, it's at least doing something. Um, and they're right. Make it about Cohen. Make it about Cohen. Make it about Cohen. I, I, so I predicted he's going to get convicted. I, I and now I know I always make the wrong. Maybe prediction. a mistrial. Maybe well, if so, some conscientious juror cares about the law and their oath, then uh, then then maybe a mistrial. And so what? What are the? I'm, I'm going to ask a stupid question: acquittal, mistrial, or hung jury um, conviction? Uh, Nico had a good line. He said, "Really, Cohen's the boat. You don't have to spell out what that means." Hold on. Bitch of all time. I thought someone was going to go with a, a more offensive angle, which I, I, you know, I would have laughed at as well. Um, <laughs> I can't even say what I was going to say. I'll get accused of things. Um, so it, it can be is it for an acquittal. Does it need full unanimity for acquittal? Yes. Okay. No. No. And no then, uh, yeah. Yes. 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 And then Either a way. a hung jury mistrial will be non unanimity. Correct. Does it require more? Than, how, no, how my, many... my view: double jeopardy should prohibit that. If you go and get twelve people to convict, that should be it. But our courts have butchered and undermined and watered down the double jeopardy clause of the u.s constitution so that you have to get 12 unanimous or it's simply a mistrial that allows a retrial right i i, I feel stupid asking the question but i have to is it 12 jury members on this on this case yes okay so 12 um, any the, felony case in the united states i believe requires 12 so no, misdemeanor cases can be less okay that's because i thought i remember seeing nine somewhere and then i felt like an idiot for saying it um the question is this I thought I read somewhere that possible, they're... sometimes they have weird rules in some states, but typically it's supposed to be tw twelve okay. for a serious felony. Did I? I thought I read somewhere that the judge was suggesting you didn't need unanimity for a conviction that nine would do, or or ten. No, no, that that okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's wrong. I well, I'm, I'm, weird I'm, in in New York law. No, that's the, now, I, what I, he I'm was sure. saying was. No unanimity is required for the crime that makes it a felony. Okay, sorry, that was it. That was it. I missed. Uh, that's that's what it was. Okay, fine. Um, so they could say we don't know this what is the crime absurd is. Absurd instruction. Absurd instruction. Okay, that was it. Sorry, I I misremembered everybody and don't quote me. Uh, we don't have to unanimously agree on what the underlying crime was, just as long as we have a suspicion, but we can still convict. Okay. Um, and so they're, let's see. We'll see how long it takes today, and if they if they go into deliberation for an hour or two and come back, they can come back immediately with a. If if one guy gets in there and says hell or high water, I'm never convicting. It's over, right? They just come back. Yeah. You'll well, never convict. No, me no, with... no. What happens is they get an Allen instruction at some point, uh, named after a case that says you must go back and deliberate, continue to work hard. Da 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 da. da. So judges usually try to twist arms, uh, and what typically happens in a jury room is. You often do not get an initial unanimous vote. Your initial vote is usually um, any, you know, is, well, it's all over the place. But you, you often have several jurors who don't believe in conviction. And the jurors who believe in uh, or don't or believe in or do believe in conviction, whichever way it is, the my, it, here's what the normal rule. If it's more than four that uh, are split, if the split is six, six, seven, five. 
uh, but even eight four, then you're usually heading towards mistrial range or maybe acquittals. On the other hand, if it's three, two, or one, those they tend to fold and capitulate. Mm -hmm. You can often know by the kind of questions, like the jurors can ask questions to the judge. It's often kind of like oral argument with a court of appeals. They're basically arguing with each, like where the judges are arguing with each other by asking questions of the arguer. Um, is that often the nature of the questions will tell you, okay, which side is dominant because they're trying to get the judge to lecture the minority jurors into accepting the majority verdict. And, and you can usually tell by the nature of the questions, sometimes the questions coming from that minority juror or, or the Nate or the phraseology of the question sounds like the majority trying to lecture the minority juror. Um, mm -hmm. Now, sometimes reading tea leaves because people can get those wrong, those questions being asked. Um, but the uh, sometimes they just get hung up on something unusual. The uh, the, be the best closing argument I've ever heard uh, or story I ever heard was from an old lawyer in L.A. who was he, he informed me about a lot of corruption in the L.A. court system in ways I didn't even know about institutional corruption that uh, the judges were being incentivized to be corrupt. But he said uh, he goes, I'll tell you, Kate Barnes. He goes, I had a case where uh, I had no defense. He goes, I just, I said none. Uh, you know, my, 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 that there was nothing I could mount for my client. I couldn't even come up with a closing argument that I could even say uh, with a straight face. So I just went up to the jury, said, we all know he's, he's innocent. We all know the government didn't prove the case. And we all know why. Not guilty. Sat down. Uh, they ended up coming back with a not guilty verdict. And they all had different opinions about, oh, was it this? Well, you know, because they were committed to being on the same. Yeah, they're like, yeah, there is something. Yeah. Oh, but was it, it this? Or was it this? It's it almost like, like it was none of it. I, it's it's it almost up. like it's the Peter Griffin. Come on. Come on. Um, Robert, let me bring up. There was one chat or one crumble rant that I did not yet bring up, and I'm going to bring it up right now. Uh, and it says, Quantum potato, first time crumble ranting. Appreciate the trial breakdowns. When I open any quote news, end quote, when I'm uh, a website, I'm bombarded with leftist garbage. Nice to have someone I trust to give the other side of the story. We are neither left nor right, but just right. We're right, I guess. We're right. Um, okay, so we'll see. The, oh, someone in the rumble rant side asked also, I think I lost the chat. It said, Oh, did they even? It's, the question was, did they even articulate a crime? As of now, I do not believe they've articulated no. the crime. They're going to do it in closing, presumably. So we'll know. Yeah, if, you, if you think he committed an unidentified crime, you can convict him of a crime. <laughs> Welcome to New York law. Fudge and bull crap is what it is. Okay. But Nate, the lawyer probably thinks that's completely <laughs> Well, I think. <laughs> I hope uh, Nate has thick skin. Um, to I, everyone, I, Okay. It doesn't matter. Robert, what's uh, the... I'm just responding in time. <laughs> if, if you're going to laugh at constitutional arguments because you don't understand the Constitution, then you know you're going to get some. You're going to get called out now, man. The uh, that, that that's the way of it. The I, I I had to block him on Twitter because I I don't want to get involved in all of his trolls. Uh, get getting uh, your feet just dragging in my. I got enough Trump. I got enough anti-Trump trolls. Anti Kennedy trolls. You got groipers who go after vaccine Robert. Vaccine trolls, groiper trolls. Uh, and that, you know, the uh, uh, I got you know, what is it? another group of trolls, but then now I already got the, the Nick Ricada trolls, people who hate Nick. And 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 you know, I was like, but I don't need to make the lawyers trolls coming in. You know, there's like, I got it's already taken up too much of my feed anyway. You only spend so much time blocking people, the Jew hating trolls that you know, there's always somebody uh, that, that are in there. Remember, uh, but, Robert, uh, you, you don't have to be a Jew to be Jewish. <laughs> but Jewish. Uh, in, in, in the words of uh, uh, the great space, a Jewish movie. princess. But uh, yeah, so an honest, conscientious jury, based on what all every we, we from everything we have seen from the Trump trial, would acquit. If there's a single conscientious juror willing to stick to his conscience, it will be a mistrial. If it's a typical New York lynching Democratic jury. We'll get a bogus guilty verdict, but this guilty verdict will not be affirmed by any semi-competent court on appeal because this judge violated pretty much every known rule of evidence and uh, and and other rights of Trump in an uh, unfair, prejudicial, partial, partisan trial that could be. By the way, credit to Judge Cannon. So she, you know, she's she's uh, she was a Trump appointee, one of the better Trump appointees. 
she ruled against me in another case that I wasn't happy with her opinion on. But uh, but that was a more I was trying to make novel law, at least in that case. She didn't take any pot shots or anything. But uh, guess what happened to Jack Smith's gag order request today? Denied, from what I saw. Not only denied, and you keep violating rules, Jack Smith, your office is going to get sanctioned. Uh, old Jackie boy's about to get exposed down there in federal court. Uh, and, and, and what that means is it's getting closer and closer. He's saying, hey, judge, why don't you just dismiss this case entirely? She's got eight different constitutional grounds to do so, including government misconduct, which is all over that case like it is every Trump case. Uh, so we might see a great government misconduct ruling coming. But that, that tells you how ridiculous the gag order in New York is. Well, let, let me this ask judge you. is like, this is nonsense. Denied. Hey. It's 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 ridiculous, but you know, Angeron did it. Kaplan, not Angeron. Who was it? Did Kaplan do it? I don't think Kaplan did it. Anyways, Angeron, well, the DC judge, the the the, the, the DC judge, well, and Shutkin. Um, yeah, Robert, Shutkin. if you put odds on it, uh, I believe uh, related to foreign communist from Jamaica. That that's her family history. Just saying. Just pointing out. Um, if you give a percentage of an outright acquittal, all 12 of them say, holy crap, this is bad, even though we want it. What are the chances? Like, of Dear Lord, the New York jury actually has, uh, is, can, it, would, it would, well, here's what I'd mostly say. It would be an incredible testament to the jury system in America that even a partisan prejudice Trump hating jury could follow the law, could uphold the law. Do you, what do you, what, what odds do you give it happening? 13%? One in 10. One in 10. One in 10. Uh, here, I'm going to bring this one up because it's uh, it says Rifka the Jamer. Apparent Rifka the Jade Gamer. Sorry. Uh, apparently, the judge said that re referencing sending Trump to jail was outrageous and requires curative instructions. Okay. Of course. So, uh, they, they, by the way, that's now this is because for years the courts have taken away our right to a jury trial on sentencing uh, and on the law. Judges made this up, by the way. The right to trial by jury at the time of our founding included the right for the jury to determine the law and the right for the jury to determine sentencing and punishment. Indeed, the very famous uh, acquittal uh, or labeled acquittal by Patrick Henry, give me liberty or give me death, famous tax trial, was not a trial where the jury determined guilt on the facts. They determined guilt on the facts. They got to determine sentencing. And at sentencing, they gave them the lowest possible sentence, $1 fine. So that tells you what our constitutional history was. But judges don't want juries to have that power. They want to have the power, so they've taken it away from them. So the second thing they do is they prohibit you from letting the jury know what the criminal exposure is. They don't even want the, mm -hmm. the, the jury to know of what, what could be the consequence of their verdict. So there's you got to be real creative to get that in. And uh, some of us have learned how to do that. You get witnesses on the stand, for example, like Michael Cohen, uh, and and who have faced certain criminal exposure. Say, Mr. Cohen, if you were charged with the same crime as as Mr. Trump, you could face four years in jail. Isn't that right? <laughs> uh, and that way, you could get to the jury what that information is. But you're not allowed to tell them their verdict could send Trump. Uh, you actually are allowed to tell them the verdict could send Trump to jail if the judge so decides. You just have to mm -hmm. add that language. But uh, but this judge is such a corrupt hack that he will continue to try to rig the jury. But it tells you something that the judge is having to go to these great lengths. So that means the judge isn't confident the jury is going to convict. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I will be so happy to be wildly wrong, but I still think he's getting convicted. So we'll, we'll see. Um, Robert, we what's have one the... more case to wrap yeah. up. Uh, and then I'm, I'm holding I'm gonna in my pee. Richard, I'm going to be on Richard Barris uh, at 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, what are the odds? Breaking down 1776 law centers, big poll about food freedom, financial freedom, medical freedom, political freedom, Trump, Kennedy, independent candidates, all the rest. Uh, here in in, in, tw in twelve minutes, you're going to be in on twelve with minutes. Yeah. Okay, fine. I, I, you, you sent me the case. I haven't but, even opened it yet. But. Oh yeah. Uh, so for those, so the uh, the vaccine mandates generally violated a lot of people's religious conscience, and religious conscience doesn't mean the Catholic Church tenets. It means your conscience. It's a belief as significant. You can be an agnostic, an atheist. Any uh, you can be of any religious denomination. Doesn't matter. It's does it violate something that goes to the core of your being of who you are as a human being? I call it, colloquially, we would call it violating your conscience. 
And in fact, some state law has now calls it violating your conscience. So for a lot of people taking the COVID vaccine violated their conscience. And by the way, historically, you're allowed to have a religious belief and that belief also be rooted in medical reasoning, be rooted in political reasoning, be rooted in, rooted in other beliefs. Uh, you, you're, you don't lose your religious beliefs because they're either rooted in or have an, uh, an ally in political or personal or social beliefs. So the uh, a lot of people objected, and a lot of employers like the Mayo Clinic, like Tyson Foods, like 3M. What's interesting is a lot of these big cases coming out of the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals in the in the district court and lower courts, and a lot of them concerning Minnesota companies. 3M, big Minnesota company. Mayo Clinic, big Minnesota company. So Tyson Foods everywhere, but in Arkansas, which is also in the Eighth Circuit. Uh, and what these companies did is they said, if you don't take this COVID-19 vaccine, then you, you can lose your job. And some people said, well, it violates my conscience to take this vaccine. And uh, they listed reasons. Sometimes they said, my body is my temple. That's my religion. I don't mm -hmm. put something like this into my body that I know to be dangerous. Um, for example, like we were talking about the Ricada case, a lot of people for whom taking illegal substances violates their religious beliefs, their moral beliefs. So in this case, it's just a substance they didn't want to take for religious reasons. For others, it was because many of the vaccines were made with the help of aborted feed, fetal cells. And 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 as just to flesh out that argument, because it's some of them actually use dere direct derivatives, and others just use derivative technology. And right. so that's the. But I didn't. I didn't. And realize some use it in the testing. Some use it at other stages. Okay, because I didn't realize the, that they're, they're and still that's using its own it. independent basis, but. You can just say historically, my body is my temple, and that's been found sufficient by mm -hmm. the EEOC and federal courts, by both the Obama administration and the Trump administration. So these people brought these claims, either my body is my temple or the abortion issue or both, against the Mayo Clinic, because they asked what the law requires is that uh, unless it's unduly burdensome, they have to make a reasonable accommodation. And in Mayo Clinic, for some of them, they said, we'll allow you to have testing, COVID-19 testing daily. And they said, no, we have objections to that on the same grounds. And so then they have to look at, is there some other accommodation they can make, a reasonable accommodation that isn't unduly burdensome? Here, there were plenty. And so the, the Mayo Clinic fired them without providing a reasonable accommodation. But the district court, following what a bunch of district courts across the country have been doing, is summarily dismissing these cases on the grounds that now your, your opinion has to be, we have to believe that you are sincerely religious. Not that your belief is sincerely a bona fide religious belief, but that you sincerely believe it. And in order for you to sincerely believe it, it has to be the exclusive basis. You cannot also have medical objections. You cannot also have political objections. On top of that, we're gonna say you don't sincerely believe it if it doesn't conform to what the religious leaders in your community said. Well, that, other... that's, and now that the Pope has come out and said everybody should get vaccinated or said some other things, so then they can use that as an argument against sincere he's, religious he's beliefs. for uh, illegal immigration, apparently. So mm -hmm. I'm waiting for those Vatican walls to open up tomorrow. So, someone, someone, why I, I see, I get very apprehensive criticizing the Pope because <laughs> I have, that's it, quite what's the word presumptuous. But you know, someone said, oh, they take immigrants into the Vatican. How the Vatican's too small, though. So open up your borders. And then if you have to send them back afterwards, send them back afterwards. That's one of the most policy. secure places in the world, the Vatican. Oh, yeah. And well, they got I'm, a big old wall around that Vatican. And they got, I don't know, I, there's a history to the Vatican that I won't get into. Have you done a hush-hush on the history of the Vatican, Robert? No, but well, on one part, the Vatican Bank. Um, that well, made a uh, cameo in the movie Godfather 3. The, but so, uh, based on actual events, by the way, the uh, uh, so that that's what's happening. Federal courts coming up with prejudiced ways to cover up for corrupt corporations religiously discriminating against people who had conscientious objections to vaccine mandates. This case against Mayo Clinic goes up to the Eighth Circuit. Everybody across the country is watching it. It's the first major appellate decision that will decide the future of these cases. Can you, as is, as the law says, as historically has been the case, as precedent would suggest? Simply say, my body is my temple. Uh, I also have uh, medical and personal and political reasons to object, but my body is my temple. That's religious. That's a religious objection. Is that sufficient, both for COVID testing and the COVID vaccine? Eighth Circuit, unanimously, mm -hmm. yes, it is. Companies are not excused from discriminating against someone's religious belief 
because they think that person's religious belief isn't sincere, because they believe that person's religious belief overlaps with a political, social, or other belief, because you're allowed to have the uh, beliefs that are both religious and political and personal and medical and physical and everything else. And so it's a big, big win. Unanimous decision shuts the door on all of these uh, cases. It's likely going to be followed all across the country. Massive win for those that are victims of religious discrimination. Massive win against COVID vaccine mandates. Well, amazing. Robert, I, I guess I'm not going to do the locals after party because everyone from locals should go watch People's Pundit with Richard Barris. So I'll do something uh, exclusive later on. Um, fantastic impromptu Sunday night show. On, I mean, look, at the, the, the Ricada thing, it's, it's you. I read it. I know what I think, but I also, and I, I know what I think of that affidavit. I know what I believe personally. And I also know what I know and what I don't know. I'm a Canadian civil attorney and I've never done criminal law in Minnesota. So I, I, I don't, I, but even I hope, you could read that affidavit and realize how dude, I, I, well when people were saying the complainants were the kids and I was like oh where does it say the kids were the ones and I read it, it's like it doesn't and people don't understand how to read uh not uh, read English but they 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 read into and they don't read so Robert let's end this we'll say our proper goodbyes locals I'll come to you later with an exclusive uh people's pundit on on YouTube and Rumble yep I should get the link here hold on one second and locals Ah, forget there's too many links. People's Pundit people. Go watch it. Uh, there was one crumble. Oh, there's two of them. Bo Shepper says, if either of you are the judge as an attorney, is this a directed verdict to acquit and never let this go to jury? Oh, yes. It, it should, should be, have been but it's dismissed not. at the indictment stage, frankly. It should be in my pot in my home opinion. Yep. Yeah. And then are political beliefs protected in the same way religious beliefs are? Says Primus Fan 92. I uh, thought in California they also were. Also religious belief. But no, right now, political based discrimination is not is a federal violation it is in some state jurisdictions yeah, that's what I, I remember there are a couple but it should be the norm because what we're seeing right now is political discrimination on par with racial and religious discrimination of years past yep. ending everybody barn stick around with our public advice everyone else i'll see you tomorrow i'm going to be live tomorrow peace out peeps